Hi, this is Deadman. If you're watching this video, I assume you're old enough to see gore, violence, swearing, and general adult content. If you aren't old enough, come back with some ID. Or a fake one. Ugh. This may be the most hype transition to a title screen ever. That is probably one of the coolest ways the game has opened. It opens up solemn, then reveals they're falling off an infinite cliff onto a busted clock tower. I love it already. Teamwork! A good portion of the cutscenes are in the slideshow type format, and it was supposed to be a cost effective measure. I'd say that's a fair trade off to make the gameplay better. Plus, it gives the game a unique style. This is a clever way to go through your intro credits. Platinum games are always a win. Having the creator of Devil May Cry helm the creation of Bayonetta is fantastic. It's honestly hilarious the games are a direct opposite of each other. Instead of having a male demon slayer, you have a female angel slayer. Even Old Eggman the Destroyer gets scrambled in the end, right? It's a Sega property, so of course there's going to be Sonic references. And I prefer my shoes made out of rubber, not concrete. I can definitely dig every monster getting a short cutscene as an entry in your bestiary. <laughs> I love the initial rug pull of Bayonetta acting like a nun, then kicking the ass of angels that show up. Next time you want me hands on you. You better make sure I'm dead. The physical comedy with these stupidly OP people is hilarious. Plus, Odon is a badass. Light up foes to a thousand degrees. Warning, fire spread. <laughs> Do you naughty little angels deserve a good banking? Bayonetta is just a female Dante, and that's not at all a bad thing. <laughs> this game is so stupid, ridiculous, and over the top, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Bayonetta. instance, it's forgivable. Plus, you can't expect to have a Scarborough Fair right off the bat, can you? I love 
love that Bayonetta's overall style with her general movements and fighting is sexy without being gratuitous. It definitely helps build her as a character and not be solely fan service. A lot of her moves incorporate dancing, which also helps build her up as a memorable character. And you're just gonna watch. I'm putting you to the work. That was your last call. I don't even know what's going on anymore, but I love it. Yeah. As long as there's music, I'll keep on dancing. Huh. Good point, Bayonetta. So, the music for the game is all over the place, but I dig the hell out of it. It goes from anywhere between epic orchestral to bubblegum pop, and it just fits so well. The combat is heavily style-based, as Devil May Cry is, albeit a bit more forgiving. Bayonetta has a variety of weapons to call on, such as a sword and rocket launchers, to make insane combos that would make Dante blush. The halos exploding from the angels also look like rings from Sonic, making it another fun easter egg from a Sega property. Ah! Damn it, who did that? I just bought the damn thing! Bayonetta's oops face is priceless. Bayonetta also has a style ranking like every character action game should. Also, loving the photo finish like she's modeling. Oh, Radon should be paying me for even touching these toys. Bayonetta is a diva, and I wouldn't have it any other way. I tell you what, if I could see them bastards that did this to my car, forget about it. Pretty sure you wouldn't stand a chance, Enzo. 20 years ago, you woke up stuck in a casket at the bottom of a lake. All you can remember is that you're a witch. But now, you're stuck because you gotta sacrifice our Halo-wearing friends every day or they'll drag your ass back down to hell. It's a bit forced, but that's a pretty succinct recap for what's going on. Huh? What the fuck? Surprisingly, a plane flying low and chaos about to commence isn't even the weirdest thing that happens in this game. Jean isn't shown nearly as much as Bayonetta, she has equal amounts of badass. Which time is another one of Bayonetta's powers, where if you dodge at the last second, you get a few seconds of time being incredibly slowed down. <laughs> Ass kicking power poses. Funny that because of which time it only lasted a few seconds. I got a little present for you. These babies are special. Built from an alloy the devil himself would kill to get his hands on. Don't break these, because they're one of a kind. Not to butt into your affairs, but I'm pretty sure you got somewhere better to be. The guys you're up against aren't the type to wait for you to finish a round. Enzo, her drinks are going on your tab, buddy. <sighs> you did beat, motherfucker. Gentlemen, it's what you've been waiting for. Angel Ready? Fire! I like 
the idea of a mini game at the end of each chapter to help you get extra items and halos. Moving from chapter to chapter has you moving a bayonet piece around the board. A nice inclusion for any character action game is being able to practice your sick moves. I dig the Indiana Jones style of map travel. Hmm. I love that delayed title card paired with Let's Dance, boys. Another small thing I like is Bayonetta Shadow that's cast, which is from Madama Butterfly, so her shadow always has butterfly wings. If Bayonetta is using a giant key as a weapon, does that technically make her a Keyblade wielder? If you get in my way, I will... How do the Americans put it? Oh yes, bust a cap in yo ass. Right on, baby. Right on. I love that Bayonetta is being goofy and making a legitimate threat, but Rodan just rolls with it. These immortal type characters are just the best to write for. Since there are no stakes for their mortality, they get to have a lot of fun making jokes like this. I love getting to collect little bits and bobs through the game to craft items like this. I love that flourish and battle pose. I also love Bayonetta doing dumb shit like using an angel's weapon as a stripper pole. Have I mentioned how much I love this game yet? So, on top of her clothes literally being made from her hair, yeah, this is pretty epic, getting to summon a demon with your hair to eat the bigger angels. It's also a nice addition that she incorporates dancing into her summoning. Whoa, no touchy. No touchy. No touch. Well, well, an Angelic Kim's gold LP. Got your hands on something awfully rare, haven't you? That thing is the perfect beat to coax out some of Hell's Uglies. One note hits their ears, and a damn who's who of Inferno comes pouring out of the inner circles. Then I can use them to breathe life into what I make best. Weapons of mass destruction. Tell you what, you give me that record, and I'll order up something so fiendish, angels will cry at the sight of it. I'll just have to pop down to the tropics for a bit. So take a load off. new weapons for finding LPs and giving them to Rodan, so he can in turn go kick some demon ass to get you new and improved weapons. Jean is also an extra diva and knows how to make a hell of an entrance. Part of your witchy powers is walking on walls when the moon is out. Here together, and it will never tear us apart. Luca is such a dork. 
He's being chased around by guards, but still has time to flirt. He's not your typical lead male cast and is, well, he's a bit of an idiot. Which means I'm right on your doorstep, Bayonetta. I'll never not love Luca, thinking he's a suave badass, but proving time and again he's not. I'll let you in on a little secret, Cheshire. The name is Luca. <laughs> Own your sense of smell, my dear. There's no rosemary in the perfume. After all, rosemary is a demon repellent. Witchy lessons. <laughs> Bayonetta dispelling berries with a kiss just adds to her overall character. <laughs> Well, that's not fair at all. Call an ambulance! Call an ambulance! But not for me! Torture attacks summon all kinds of torture devices from the Middle Ages, and it's fun. Well, fun for us, not so much for the angels. <laughs> I really like having to use witch time for small-scale puzzles. You've played enough hide-and-seek, my scurrying little friend. Just a child? I don't know why, but I always find it hilarious that Bayonetta is very much a shoot-first-and-ask-questions-later kind of gal. Yet another hilarious shot since we were in a regular old building, but now apparently we're way up in the air with a dragon angel. Because Nintendo swooped in to save the day and Bayonetta is on the Switch, you can have Bayonetta wear costumes from characters owned by Nintendo. The angels even get their own special language. Also, Disturbs my slumber. If I was your child, I'd be an awfully ugly witch, wouldn't I? Yours is a face only a mother could love, and one I could never forget. No quarrel? You're in no position to decide that. See, my infernal partners love my ability to eliminate your kind. I figure your sacrifice would shut them up for a while. I'd say one big angel would definitely be worth more than a few puny ones. Don't you just hate it when you're... The city fills with lava. Being able to casually toss cars with my hair is not something I thought I'd put on my gamer resume. <laughs> to add a layer of strategy, you have to go into witch time to be able to attack enemies on fire. Make sure to pay attention to the cutscene. You may have to deal with an immediate threat afterwards. The Alfheim portals are fun side areas that give you some restrictions to practice your abilities, as well as earn extra rewards. Surfing on angels! If you get a game over, some very handsy hands will drag you down to hell. Hey, check this out. What are you buying? 
Heard that in a game once. Resident Evil 4 merchant reference. Occasionally, you can go inside portals to get to Paradiso. I'm sorry. I forgot to mention one of the reasons I hunt your kind. You're much too ugly not to put out of your misery. <laughs> Bayonetta always chooses the renegade interrupt option. Flock off, Featherface. Flock off, Featherface! Fighting a dragon angel is not something I thought I'd ever put on my gamer resume. Goofy stuff like activating witch time so you don't lose your sucker is a win. flyer miles for that flight. You can collect Antonio's notebooks, which gives more insight on the Lumen Sages, as well as the Umber Witches and Vigrid. What the? I've often seen a girl without lipstick, but lipstick without a girl? Most curious, isn't it, Cheshire? Bayonetta continually toying with Luca is always a win. Okami reference. The truth is, you killed my father. My name is Inigo Montoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Kill me in plain sight? Go ahead. It would only prove everything I've said about you. Well, that and sadden the hearts of a number of young ladies. Is the number zero? Neg, I didn't know you made jokes. I made you, didn't I? You... what? I am your father dead. That's not true! That's impossible! Yeah, you're right. Oh, that was anticlimactic. Claire and Trish and Sylvia and Amy. Capcom girls! Well, if you're gonna die anyway, might as well go out in a blaze of glory. What the? Inadvertently saving a dumbass. A neat visual touch is the hands dragging the screen when you're low on health. They're ready to drag you to hell the moment you trip up. When the moon doesn't want to come out, Make it. Okay, that's a cool shot. Who are you? And don't you dare say my long lost sister. I mean, kinda? <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> 
which time doesn't affect Jean. You know, because she's also a witch. That's a nice showcase of the animal within powers we are about to acquire. Come on. Bayonetta takes nothing seriously, and I adore that about her. Bayonetta having an amnesia dream about Rosa singing to her while Sereza says mummy is some pretty decent foreshadowing. If there's two things I hate in this world, it's cockroaches and crying babies. Well, a crying baby cockroach would be truly terrible. You're not from Figrid, are you, little one? Where are you from? Uh, I'm from my house. Well, now. I'll hazard a guess this isn't your home. Sarays is so stinking adorable. Also, since all the main characters have finally showed up, I thought this was a fun little anecdote. I was looking at behind the scenes for the game, and apparently because Hideki Kamiya was first told no repeatedly, then the higher-ups caved, he put glasses on every main character because originally the marketing team didn't think glasses would be very good in marketing. Jokes on them, I love the cast even more for having glasses since I'm cursed to wear mine constantly. It's a small bit of representation for me, but honestly, how many people wear glasses and kick this much ass? Mommy. <laughs> Don't worry, it's always scary the first time you see them. Nice double entendre there, Bayonetta. So, where was I? Oh, yes. Your kind invitation? I do hope you've prepared dessert as well. <laughs> oh, what a lovely tea party. And dancing, too. Cereza, my dear, watch and learn. Bayonetta continues to show how she is the best. Ass kicking with a side of mentorship. I never thought I would put breakdancing with guns on my feet and finishing with a photo finish on my gamer resume. I fucking love this game. <laughs> The angel falling in love with Cereza is a hilarious short-lived side plot. I feel bad for it. (laughs) 
Sorry, is that you, traitor? Do you think all witches look the same? Hmm. off with your angel doppelganger. That's an interesting way to introduce yourself. Mommy, you're a mom? You? Come now, Cheshire. Look at me. Do I look like I have any interest in children? Now making them... Well, that's another story. That's kind of gross, but also hilarious. <laughs> Bugger. And I didn't make any time for pillow talk. out Luca and Cereza. <laughs> this mix of Fly Me to the Moon is just fantastic. I absolutely love this mix of it, and with Moon River and Bayonetta 2, it makes me excited to see what other moon-based remix we will get in 3. Our angels. Alrighty then. <laughs> Time to go boom! Okay, the motorcycle section is cool and all, but it handles very jankily. No matter how much you ask, I'm not putting a chainsaw on your arm. Well, if I beat you and use the Rodan weapons, I can. So technically you do. Also, Evil Dead reference. Bayonetta slowly unraveling her past is fun to see. I've seen enough hentai to know where this is going. Tentacles? Why did it have to be tentacles? Snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? was titillating. There's a boss rush here. I thought we loved boss rushes. I am 
Having to kill these angel spirits to raise the water level to walk on isn't really a puzzle, but it's very interesting. Yay! Don't panic. I'm here. There's no need to worry about a thing. Yeah, that's not really filling me with confidence. Can't you see? Mommy's fighting the bad monsters for us. Mister, if you don't open your eyes, you'll miss everything. Look at these. That's a handy trick. <laughs> Luca also realizes that Bayonetta might not have been responsible for his father's death. Well, Kitty, what do you think we should do? He's hurt you, has he? Well, we can't be having that now, can we? Bayonetta going on a rescue mission for Cereza's Cheshire is both sweet and hilarious. Let's rock, baby! Devil May Cry reference. Each clan, working at the behest of the powers that be, sought to lead their fractured world towards peace. They both possessed an eye said to have the power to create history that they used to oversee the world. However, their spirit of cooperation did not last. For amongst them, a pair of young star-crossed lovers conceived a child that sent the clans on a path to ruin. The woman was thrown in jail and the man exiled from his clan. However, the child remained with the Umbra, raised as a black sheep, even amongst the darkness. Bayonetta's backstory is actually really interesting. Pity it started an all-out war that wiped both clans out. to the rescue? Is he not rescuing them? No, he is. It's just odd he's doing something right for a change. I haven't really talked much about them, but the angels are very well designed. Most of them seem like the biblically accurate variety rather than a human with wings and a halo. Door surfing while fighting a giant angel is most certainly a win. Guiding said giant angel to the mouth of your giant flaming hair spider is awesome. Board, Cheshire. Oh, fucking hell! Bayonetta's fighting off the angel in witch time, then showing up at the helicopter before Luca and Cereza is great. You're really not going to like what comes next. I hope you know that. Don't tell me. Air Cheshire has awful in flight entertainment and horrendous food. But the further down you go, the harder it is to not notice the reality. Cheshire, look. Oh, I'm 
looking. Sir, you have a helicopter to pilot. Hey, this is no time to ogle pretty girls, son. Her fucking reaction shot is her chest. I can't even. <laughs> Well, that was an anticlimactic ending. It's not over, you idiot. Welcome to my fantasy zone. Get ready. Fantasy zone and space harrier reference. I'm not sure who designed this, but they need to be fired out of a cannon. Why would you make a mandatory section flip the whole screen like this for dodging? That's even worse because it's in the PS4 version, the latest to date. The final fight with Jean is intense and I love it. It's on par with the final clash between Dante versus Virgil in DMC3. Jean even gets a visual suit upgrade to really show she and Bayonetta are evenly matched. can toss missiles back and forth. <gasps> Fun fact, that stone translates to Jean and Cereza. Hey, <gasps> is it over? What? It's not like you don't scare the shit out of me all the time. <laughs> what about you? You really think I'm gonna let myself be seen in public with a girl looking all beat up like that? Oh. I look dreadful, do I? Huh? You'll have to learn to wipe that stupid look off your face, or I'll never let you keep chasing me around this world. Got that? Luca? was a genuinely good moment between these two, especially with Bayonetta finally acknowledging him by his real name for the first time. Fuck this section. Gonna give any a la- No. What follows those living in the light is nothing but the profound, empty darkness born from the shadow that grows longer as they approach the brilliant radiance. To truly see, your eyes must be open to both light and dark. That's actually a good point. Yeah, but quit rubbing lipstick on a toddler, you psycho. My name is Balder. Can I give out wins for a villain being stylish as fuck? Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. I've had enough of your philosophical pretensions. Bayonetta is done with the pompous speeches and would rather get back to ass kicking. For being kind enough to ascertain that my long lost eraser was at the bottom of some lake, I granted him his final wish and accepted his permanent resignation. You bastard! Turns out Luca harbored a grudge for Bayonetta for no reason since it was her father that killed Lucas. You are of no use to me. However, I am not without dignity. I will allow you to die in the same manner as your father. Man, Baldur is a dick. Well... I guess my plan has gone right out the window. Damn it, that's a good one-liner, though. Fear not, my dear, sweet Cereza. Balder has revealed multiple times in this cutscene that Cereza is just Bayonetta's younger self, and I can honestly say I did not see that coming. Damn, Baldur's a badass. Mm. 
So, while it's weird he fused with Cereza, he does look pretty badass in his ultimate form. Mad-Zero-Dog! It's not a final boss fight unless someone is shooting a fucking orbital laser at you! did not see that coming. not a final boss fight until someone throws a building at you. Extra points if you headbutt it back to him. tennis with a satellite is not something I thought I would put on my game resume. Damn, my resume is getting filled out. Don't fuck with a witch. Headshotting your father in slow-mo with lipstick is absolutely badass. It deserves a ton of wins. I will be taking no further questions. Gotta give you credit, Bayonetta. You never cease to impress. Luca's alive. Also factually correct. Mommy. <laughs> Daddy. No need to be afraid, little one. The nightmare is over. Everything was just a dream. You're a strong little girl. There is nothing you cannot overcome. Bayonetta being able to reassure her child self that everything is going to be okay is just so wholesome, and I love it. And now it is done. The right eye oversees the light. The left eye oversees the darkness. Two eyes to oversee the world. It was never the woman known as Bayonetta that I set my sights upon. It was you as a child, Cereza, that I saw. For she was the one who saw the world through innocent eyes. And she was the one who could give rise to a new history. They played us like a damn fiddle! That's a shit way to end a game. It's not over, Ding Dong. A nice touch is since Bayonetta is out of commission, she's unavailable to play Angel Attack. Thank God. There's still time. John's alive. Driving a motorcycle up a launched rocket is not something I thought I would put on my gamer resume. 
I have no intentions of gazing upon the left eye. I am here to reclaim my Umbran sister. John to the rescue. Summoning Shiva, the white hair is a nice visual cue letting you know that Jean was still around and is helping you kill a goddess. Wait, is this a JRPG and nobody told me? This game seriously fucking rules. How often do you summon a giant hair demon to punch a goddess's soul out of their body? Not only do you punch it out, but you guide it into the friggin' sun! John stepping on the credits because there's still work to do. Dismantling the corpse of Jubileus is great. Unbelievable. We managed to stop this abomination, and it's still going to destroy the world. John! <laughs> this game is so fucking stupid, and I love it. Come now. You're one of a kind. If you die here, who's going to save the world? I'll send you home, even if it kills me. Now, let's finish this. You and I are going home together. John, we're both one of a kind. Now those are the eyes I've been waiting to see. And like that, love bloomed on the battlefield. John! I'm okay! Back to the beginning of the game. I said I'd never give up chasing you. I just never thought the chase would end like this. I feel a little bad for Luca. He finally let go of his grudge against her after finding out she didn't kill his father, and now he thinks he's lost her for good. Another callback to the beginning of the game. This looks ridiculous on me. I swear, this is the last time I cosplay. You hear that? That's your cue. Huh? <laughs> Will you hurry up? Don't tell me you fell asleep in that thing again. Let's dance, boys. Equally as iconic and epic as Let's Rock, baby. You can fight more battles while the credits are rolling. Climb into the moon. Having the final credit sequence play Helena Nagura's cover of Fly Me to the Moon is so lovely. Bayonetta ends with a dance sequence. Why don't more games end with dance numbers? This is completely amazing! I absolutely adore Bayonetta. Both game and character are absolute delights. This is the game that got me into character action games, and I couldn't be happier for it. It's character action at its finest, being utterly ridiculous and stylish. 
I still think it's amazingly cool that Bayonetta's complete design was made by a woman. She uses her femininity and seductiveness as a weapon, rather than just being eye candy. I also love that she was created because Hideki Kamiya thought there were too many male protagonists, and I'm very happy he made this wonderful decision. The story is pretty odd, but considering the story of these things is never the real important part of things, that's okay. There's time travel, so that always complicates things. Beyond that though, it's just dumb fun, and that's always good for a fun time. The music is stellar. I love how we can go from these hugely ominous orchestral tracks to something that's basically bubblegum pop. I'll always praise retooling an older song like Fly Me to the Moon and make it sound completely different. The gameplay is very tight and makes you crave trying the level again to see if you can hit a better score than last time. Being able to use the angel's weapons against them is also fantastic as it gives you some extra variety. The torture attacks are also a fun addition as most of them are a bit on the silly side. The only real complaint I have is the timings for the button mashings that are not that forgiving as it's extremely difficult to finish them completely most of the time. More than the graphics looking good, I'm gonna say like I always do, the art style is much more impressive than the actual graphics. Bayonetta is fashionably stylish, and knows it. The rest of the cast is uniquely designed as well, and I love that it's incredibly easy to pick each of them out of a lineup. I do like the way they worked around for having a limited budget was to not animate everything and have some still show up in reels. This also loops back to the gameplay. They clearly focused on that and with the game, I'm glad it plays very fine tuned as opposed to having stellar visuals. In closing, I adore the hell out of Bayonetta. Yes, that pun was intended. I can't wait to see more from the team and I'm very, very excited to dive into Bayonetta 3 and see what our favorite Dommy Mommy Witch has been up to since the last adventure. Thank you for watching and try not to die out there. Don't fuck with the witch. The fun's just getting started. Immediately, we start with a records of time segment, and since it's an animation, it's depicted with these lovely stained glass windows. One day, that balance was toppled resulting in an era of strife. It began when a Lumen Sage and an Umbra Witch violated the decrees that bound them and produced a child together. Have you seen Rosa? I'd violate some decrees if it meant holding her hand, let alone siring a child with her. The woman was imprisoned, and the man was banished. That's sexist. Seeing both angels and demons depicted in the stained glass style is seriously awesome. The studio that made Bloody Fate is Gonzo. The same studio that made Helsing and the Afro Samurai. Why is that a win, you ask? Well, if I have to say, clearly you don't have eyeballs. I am the way into the city of woe. I am the way to a forsaken people. I am the way into eternal sorrow. They even got all the voice actors from the game to reprise their roles. Yeah! Bloody Fate wastes no time getting to the ass kicking since that's what we're here for. Naughty, naughty. Just look at what you've done to my outfit. Very cheeky. It just wouldn't be Bayonetta without a little gratuitous stripping. Seeing Bayonetta's cat suit appearing fully animated is a win. <laughs> Don't interrupt a man at his music. Don't you ever touch a black man's radio, boy! I will be giving this a win with no further questions. <laughs> Rodan's summoning of the Scarborough Fair is epic. Enter the Alpha Knight. Not a bad name, if I say so myself. Oh, sorry, the Alpha Knight. The fun's just getting started. 
Like, you know they're going to, but including the music that's in the game just adds that extra touch of depth to the movie. The movie's version of Witch Time is a win. Oh, my car! Ha! This time it's Luca's car, not Enzo's, that gets wrecked. God damn it, it's not even paid off yet! Sometimes it's like that. Better hope your insurance covers acts of godsling. One cool thing about animated movies like this is you can actually see the scale of destruction these giant angels have just by moving around, something the game engine really won't allow. I don't think you've met my infernal partner. He's telling me that he feels a bit peckish. I believe he'd be quite satisfied if he made a meal out of you. What do you think? Hell yeah, hair summoning. I'll fix you a mysterious destiny with one olive. Hey, the drink is named after the song. Or is it the other way around? Bayonetta, that's not proper sucker storage. My, so many lady friends. I'm impressed. Still, it's not nice to be a peeping Tom. Such a bad little boy. Come up, it's... I mean, it is rude to stare at a lady's chest like that. This is no time to ogle pretty girls, son. There isn't any rosemary in Fleur du Cire. The herb repels demons. Herbology lessons from a witch. <laughs> Delayed title card. <laughs> Kitty rubs are a win. Without good-hearted souls like me to put these bastards six feet under, where'd society be? Fun fact about me, I actually used to work at a funeral home. And let me tell you, funerals are a scam. So Enzo being a con artist is completely in character for him. Or at least giving me that reward you still owe me. Don't make me laugh. You enjoy killing them Halo douchebags. I hear you get all fired up. Just because she enjoys her work doesn't mean she shouldn't get paid for it. As a matter of fact, since she is so zealous about her work, I think she deserves a raise. That's a really awesome application of your witch powers. <laughs> Not every day you see gunfu versus bike foo. The fun's just getting started. Mid-air collisions are always awesome. Turning the camera on its side is a neat perspective shot. Where's mummy? Is she here? Well, that depends. If you're a good girl, then Mummy will come for you very soon. Cereza's a good girl. Cereza is impossibly even more adorable than she was in the game. Love the transition into the gates of hell. What did you do to him? All I did was have a little shootout with some awful woman. You were shooting at yourself there. Still the most epic way to start a bike ever. Mommy! That clip alone embodies parenthood so hard. What's your name, little one? Cereza. Did you forget, Mommy? Probably. But I likely won't remember it later either. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, little one. I am not your mother. So stop calling me that. I'm sure your daddy will be back. I want to stay with you, Mommy. <laughs> This is awkward. <laughs> Aww, how can you say no to that precious face? I don't shit. recall ordering any room service. Ha! <laughs> Luca's immediate shit gets me every time. Whoa, don't get the wrong idea. I mean, it might be the right idea, but just not right now. Ah! Oh, he fell! Is the old man dead now? No ghosts are coming to fetch him, so he must be alive. Unfortunately. Holy shit, why wasn't that an unlockable costume? What is it? What's wrong, little girl? <laughs> I'm a... I'm a crybaby. And mommy hates crybabies. So she left me. 
That is too precious, and I feel a little bad for laughing at it. Oh, come on, these things are angels? I thought angels were supposed to be pretty and play harps. These guys are monsters. Someone hasn't actually read the Bible. Poser. When I grow up, I'll be strong too, and then I'll protect mommy. Considering Cereza is Bayonetta, the match cut is very appropriate here. When I asked you to babysit the little one, I meant at home. Luca. How many times have I told you? I'm not Luca. I'm Cheshire. Now stop pissing me off and get it right already. The Scarborough Fair. New and improved. This bad boy might even be hard for you to get a handle on. Aw, oh, hell yeah! We get the OG Scarborough Fair now. You lost the will to fight when your mother died. As a witch, I had to protect you. Something nice about Bloody Fate is it does clear up a few muddled plot points, like Bayonetta crying and being unable to fight when she found Rosa's dead body. Bayonetta, I'm sorry for blaming you all this time. It's not like you mentioned it a lot. Please, Cereza, you must save him. He's imprisoned by a blinding madness. It's destroying him. Please. So even though this movie is non-canon, it's interesting to see how this line is technically true, coinciding with the ending of Bayonetta 2. I'm here for my Umbran sister. Fuck your new world. Jean is a delight. <laughs> Seeing a physical representation of Jubileus being weakened on her left side after Bayonetta left her is a wonderful touch that I wish could have been incorporated into the game. That summon sword goes hard. Sheba, Queen of Inferno. A fitting match for any god. Epic hair teamwork summoning. It's not a final boss fight until you yeet a god at a moon. Wait, that's not the line. It's not every day you get to use bondage on a god. Damn, this video is going straight to demonetization. And I don't even get paid yet. Transforming Jean's pistol into an oversized hand cannon for Queen Sheba is amazing. I still maintain that Headshot by Lipstick is one of the best and most hilarious deaths I've ever seen. Farewell. Not as cool as punching the creator's soul out of her body and guiding it into the sun, but badass nonetheless. It's still hard to believe you're a nun. Honestly, it's not as bad as you think. You should come and try it sometime. No thanks. I'm perfectly happy teaching high school. Funny enough, those are Bayonetta and Jean's canonical jobs. Alright, let's dance, baby. That's a hell of a way to end the movie. The ending song, as well as having various sketches for the closing credits, are a win. Bayonetta Bloody Fate was decent enough for a tie-in movie. It's a very loose retelling of the first game, but there's certain parts, such as Bayonetta bathing with Cereza, or some of her interactions with Luca and Balda that I feel are better portrayed than in the game. For the aforementioned bathing scene, she talks to Cereza about her mother, and picking up on context clues, it's clear that Cereza has no idea her mummy died, and she's just away and misses her dreadfully, hence her being a bit of a crybaby. She misses her mother, and there's not really anyone around to soothe her, so Bayonetta takes it upon herself to play with Cereza and give her a little instances of happiness. It's something that leads well into Bayonetta 2, since we know she has depth beyond the innuendo and ass-kicking, but it's not portrayed the best in the original game. She also has an extended conversation with Jean, and it goes into why Bayonetta was sealed. She found her mother's body, and understandably, she broke down it was going to be captured by the angels and John didn't let that happen. Just small things here and there that could have made the first game a 
tad bit better. I did gloss over a bunch of parts since it is a retelling, but overall it's worth a watch if you're the fan of the games. It's not a great substitute for playing the game, but it's a nice watch if you have about an hour and a half to kill. Thank you for watching, and try not to die out there. Headshot! While it's not as extended as Bayonetta 1, the title screen is no less awesome. Love the chapter select this time around. It gives a slight hint towards a future character, and it's stylish. Freeze-framed shot foreshadowing Bayonetta teaming up with Rosa is an epic way to start the game. A struggle caused the trinity of realities to be split into three realms. Light, darkness, and chaos. Obviously, our world was the one born from chaos. Yeah, that tracks. Oh yes! Magic mech! Aesir's eyes were truly the eyes that created the world. However, Aesir pitied the humans for their naivete and lack of free will. So the power he wielded was split into two equal halves and entrusted each to humanity's instincts. The right eye of light and the left eye of darkness. Isn't this just retconning the first game? You could look at it like that. Or you can instead look at it as getting more context. I hate you and your dumb positive face. I know we're supposed to be on the demon side or whatever, but that's pretty badass. I summon Fortuido in attack mode and attack your life points directly. You're the silent type. The last sage I met spent 20 minutes rambling on and on. Ironic, considering this is Balder. You will not escape this fate. We will perish together. Last, you have fulfilled your promise to me. Fear not, for I am always watching over you. While Baldur is becoming one with the Force, this confusing segment is a nice way to add in some mystery right away. Five minutes in, and this game is just as compelling as the first. I like the trend that continues from the last game, making the developer and publisher logos appear on objects in the world, then being highlighted. 
Small aside, it's shocking, but I'm very glad Nintendo funded Bayonetta 2 and kept the IP going. Bayonetta was one of those games I played in my formative years, and it's impacted me in such a way that I'm happy it's as mainstream as it is. TLDR, these wins are for Nintendo for furthering my Dommy Mommy fantasy. Platinum games are always a win. You know what I need? Some heels without guns. They aren't very good for battle, but they do look nice. Here I was shopping, minding my own business, then you show up and turn me into a damn porter. Perhaps, but better to be a porter to Bayonetta than in Death Stranding. Also, fun fact, Enzo has the same voice actor as the Crypt Keeper. It's strange seeing her out of her battle attire, but it's nice to see that Bayonetta always has a sense of style. Also, I'm loving the extra facial expressions added in now that the game has a bit more funding. If you weren't already lined up to go to Inferno, you'd be well on your way with all the shit you pull. Dressing up like a nun just so you can off some angels and keep the underworld happy. Okay, but like, that is her job in both ways. I'm gonna win this scene to win this scene as I do, but John's cat goggles get extra wins. You always know how to make an entrance, John. A rare sight to see you in the city. Just had something I had to look into. Love how they just casually throw presents on Enzo. Cereza, you haven't felt anything strange recently. Now that you mention it, I still haven't quite figured out how a broke, bumbling wise guy managed to turn himself into a semi-respectable family. Pretty sure that's not what she meant, but by all means, throw that shade. Still loving that Bayonetta and John Shadows are Madama Butterfly and Madama Styx, respectively. We'll talk later. I'll see you back home. Don't forget to pick up the things for the party. Bayonetta and John are a couple, and I love that hardly any attention is brought to it. This is how you do representation. John's general disregard for... Well, anything is hilarious. You know, I try to avoid doing this in my Sunday best. <laughs> I love that the first angel being introduced is a new one. Most of the angels you fight this go around are new too. At least your lot still knows how to make an end. I'd say you know how to make an entrance as well. We get the gratuitous strip shot again, and I'm by no means complaining. We get an awesome new look for Bayonetta, and we get a new song in the form of Moon River instead of Fly Me to the Moon. Bayonetta 2 knows how to start off a sequel properly. Bayonetta 1 has us fighting in a graveyard, and now Bayo 2 has us fighting on a flipping jet. Hell yeah! I never buy anything on sale. Rodon 
Sean drifting Enzo's car onto a building to pass Bayonetta her new guns, Love is Blue, is just... It's just so beautiful. So, um, yeah, expect this wind counter to be even crazier than the first. I believe! I fucking believe! Beautiful. Radon epitomizes what I love about these games. These characters are immortal, so they spend their time dicking around or not getting out of harm's way and it just makes it hilarious and epic. Now it's time to move. John to the rescue. Okay, let's be real. She's not there for the rescue. She's there for funsies. This is an awesome shot. Bayonetta and Jean being upside down from each other with the little touch of lens flare flashing their respective colors. Bayonetta now has a true blue devil trigger in the form of Umbra and Climaxes. It makes all of your attacks pack a punch as if they were wicked weave attacks. Honestly, this is what was really missing from the first game. Having a temporary power-up is always helpful. That was quick. Did you get everything? <sighs> Forgot the caviar. Damn it, John! You never forget the caviar! Teamwork! Something I'm very appreciative of is the quick time button mashing is a lot more forgiving this time around. I was not expecting that. But I was expecting not to expect something, so it doesn't count. Okay, that time it's John to the rescue. John. Oh, shit. I really wasn't expecting that. I'm not one for pets who don't listen to their masters. Okay, but seriously, fighting your own demonic summon is badass and a great way to up the ante from the first game. Midair summoning up one of the new demons. Continuing the theme from the last game, we get these still cutscenes in a watch face. I love that some of these stylistic choices are kept the same even if they may have had a bigger budget this time around. The combat is excellent and incredibly tight, and that's more important than fully rendered cutscenes. Dead witches get dragged to hell. It is what it is. Jean's gonna wander Inferno suffering for eternity. Them's the breaks. I know you're Rodon, but damn, dude, like, chill. That's her woman you're talking about. I didn't ask you to tell me what I already know, Rodon. Especially if you're going to be flip about it. Not even Rodon, who is technically the strongest being in her universe. His title is the Infinite One, and they don't just hand that title out. You know, she's pretty hot for a dead chick. <laughs> it wasn't a big fan of her shit when she was in the realm of the living. But looking at her now, nah, still not a fan. Enzo, what the fuck? I'll see what I can do about putting her on ice for a while. You need this. The heart of an Umbra witch. The magic that keep your kind alive in this world for eternities. Should keep her body in this realm stable. But you'll need to reunite this with her soul. If you gonna try and bring her back, I figure you got about a day before it's game over. Finding out more about the Umber Witch's powers is pretty awesome. Those watches are more than a fashion accessory. And I still gotta play Santa tonight. Let the real Santa take care of the presents. Bayonetta just casually confirms the existence of Santa. Alrighty then. 
New shop rule. No shoes, no shirt, no service. Hair doesn't count. <laughs> Just kidding. What'll it be? As with the first game, we get an Indiana Jones-esque map showing where we travel. That's... ominous. Bayonetta just casually riding on top of the plane is great. I'd love for her to ride on top of me. This beautiful vista is brought to you by the delayed title card. Where did these clouds come from? One day, I too wish to have legs so powerful they can move planes. That's some precise landing. The secret levels return as Muscleheim this go around. I don't remember randomly shifting city structures being in the travel brochure. <laughs> These punches don't know when quick. What do I ever do to them? Loki's pretty badass. Also, Yu-Gi-Oh! reference. I doubt that's what it is, but I can't see a gold pyramid necklace and throwing cards as anything but that. Wait till you see the climax. Silly girl. Bayonetta to the rescue. Another nice retooling from the first game is having the angel slash demon weapons be mapped to your gun. Virgil, is that you? Bayonetta would absolutely skip cutscenes. Using your own face to kill you is pretty epic. But since this is your bloody mess, do you mind hurrying the fuck up and getting rid of this thing? Now, that's no way to talk to a lady. No wonder your guardian angels are trying to give you a good spanking. You seem to have skipped school the day they taught basic negotiation skills. You're supposed to negotiate from a position of strength, little one. Not just be a one-trick pony. Negotiation lessons. Um, about that trick. See? You need my power too. I suppose. First, learn to talk to a lady. We don't react very well to being insulted, little one. Well then, I don't react to being called bitter one. The name's Loki. And what should I call you, love? I mean, man. Do I look like a man to you? Well, at least he's trying. Yeah, I'm giving out wins because I have chainsaw skates and there's nothing you can do about it. There's a handful of chests that you have to gather the pieces to form. It's not a lot more than an obstacle of sorts, but it's still a neat idea. Also, gotta shout out the shotgun scythe. Yay! Bayonetta heard your cries of step on me, mommy, and is more than happy to comply. Not 
tricks, little magician. Maybe you've got more to offer than I expected. For the time being, though, stay here and don't get frisky. This reminds me of that titties are not pockets video. Except hers actually are. Titties are not pockets. So, our fates and our paths cross once again. Bingo. Luca still thinks he's suave, but he's still an idiot. At least he's more competent this time around. Mostly. Quit calling me that. I'm not a pet or a cat. Oh, wait, you said Luca. Not used to that. The clans of the Overseer watching over us all with the eyes of the world, the power to govern light and darkness. But now I know that there really was an Overseer. And this Overseer is the one who created the eyes of the world for humanity, the same ones that the clans held on to so hard. The Overseer was the true creator, the true god of the human realm, the god of chaos. Still loving when sequels expand on the lore we thought we knew initially. Listen, I heard about John. What the? Nice booby trap. Which timing a wave while running across it is badass. You don't just walk into Fimbleventer. One does not simply walk into Mordor. That's one hell of a transition. Damn, it got Metal Gear Rising really quick in here. Oh, uh, the fuck was that? Wait, who the fuck are you? Hey, you're the pervert staring at Bayonetta's tits all the time. You really need to learn how to talk to a lady. It's the pot calling the kettle black, but it's hilarious, so I'll allow it. That's, uh, one way to do it. Bayonetta to the rescue. Bayonetta and Baldur summon a demon and angel respectively, and it's cool to see them fighting in the background while your own battle is raging on. Aw oh, shit, y'all! Kaiju fight! Thanks to Loki, we have a new animal within power. Holy hell, we get to fight demons. <coughs> I said what I said. Good to know some of you are keeping your part of the contract. Fist bumping your demon pals that don't turn on you. Let's just say I have plenty of experience with nothing coming to mind. I've done my homework. 
Would you expect anything less from the marvelous, magnificent, magnanimous Luca? A struggle caused the trinity of realities to be split into three realms. Light, darkness, and chaos. Obviously, our world was the one born from chaos. Luca rereading the opening story without the chaos of battle going on is a win. Somehow I haven't mentioned that with new angels come new torture attacks and... Yeah, they're just as brutal as always. You get a Loki playable section. It's just running though, nothing fancy. I hope this one lasts a little bit longer. These pawns can no longer serve my purposes. Power must be held in my own hands to truly be attained. Fine. I'll do it myself. Fighting against a giant demon manta ray underwater is pretty badass. The Insidious swallows you up and you get a first-hand look at the anatomy of these things. Yo, we heard you like demons, so we put you inside a demon with other demons inside the big demon. Defeating demons nets you a new cutscene to shatter the barrier. The right eye. Just a bit of foreshadowing for who the mass lumen sage is. I absolutely love callbacks like this. You know, love, you're probably the only person on the planet who says go to hell and means take me there. Time for me to hit the road, love. Things to do and all. The world is dark and full of terrors. No place to be alone. What do you want about love? You should be happy I helped you this long. Now I have to get to Thimble Venter. No, you will stay right here. I, I, I can't focus on what I need to do here if I have to worry about you off on your own. Come now, love. I'll take you to Thimble Venter after we finish my business. Yeah, great plan, love. You can't be on your own, so let's go into the depths of hell. Don't save your friend. I'm out of here. I said no. I'm seriously loving how much we're getting to see Bayonetta care about Loki. It's a softer side we saw bits of in Bayonetta 1, but it's more fleshed out here. Listen, mate. One, the mask is shit. Damn, dude. You don't have to attack his personal style. Well, it's not a final boss battle, but he is the final boss, and he's throwing a building at me, so I'm gonna count it as it's not a final boss fight until someone throws a building at you. You can't do that. That's illegal. Listen, first off, I am the Senate. And second off, this is for giving me grief during the Dream Drop Distance video. You are no left eye, but you may still forfeit it like a lady. No lady would ever hand anything to a man who chases after little boys. Rosa. Rosa. Stay with me now. 
It's been 20 years since I last saw you. But I kept it safe all this time. The present you gave me. The symbol of our love. Your face will be the last thing I see. Thank you. Rosa. Rosa, please. Damn, I never expected to feel bad for or empathize with Balder, but here we are. He got used to start the war with both clans, and he's lost the love of his life. It's pretty heartbreaking, actually. Giant flaming spider named Phantasma Rene? Seems awfully familiar to another flaming spider named Phantom, don't you think? Don't tell me you came here to rescue me, like some kind of knight in shining armor. Rescue? Do I look like the rescuing type? If you were to kick the bucket here, I'd be all over your soul like a hungry hyena. <laughs> Honesty! Madame Butterfly, or cross of I don't know what you did to piss her off, but whatever it was, nice. Going to be a bloody coronation. Damn, Bayonetta's got the best one liners. <laughs> Saving Jean and having an epic finisher. Man, this game's doing wonders for Bayonetta's character. Do you see the rage in her face? It's seriously awesome how much her character has grown since the first game. <laughs> Damn, woman, I thought I told you to cheat. You've got more important shit to do than dealing with this monstrosity. Rodan is a badass. Jean, get up. You're going to be late. Jean, it's time. Get up. Please, Jean, wake up. Now she's showing fear like we've never seen before. I've got no problems with the stoic archetype badass kicking ass, but I always like to see that they have a vulnerable side too. It makes the character way more relatable and human. Sir Hesa. John's alive. What do you need? A wake up kiss or something? I'd like a wake up kiss from her. This, but this is, Sir Hesa. you came here to, to rescue me? Are you insane? People always do crazy things when they're in love. Gotta hand it to you. This is quality. The perfect palette for an artiste. Now, let me do my dirty. You've not So that's how that works. Getting to see Rodan make a weapon is pretty cool. As for its power, well, you don't need me to explain the finer points of fucking shit up, do you? Getting to ride your horse summon with the sword face is way better than Route 666 from the last game. It's a riding section though, I want to cut it off. A horse with a sword on its face? Your argument is invalid. Bayonetta and Diomedes to the rescue.
Bayonetta is a certified badass to defend herself and Loki with only her feet in heels on the back of a moving demon horse. It's cool to see that Lumen Sages continually have similar powers to the Umbra Witches by showing off Baldur's animal within. Umbra Witch. Or shall I call you Bayonetta? That seems to be what people call me these days. Very well then, Bayonetta. You shall be the first Umbra Witch to die at my hand. Aw, oh, hell yeah! Baldur's bringing out the peacock winged form. Say what you will about it, it's super memorable. I know where this is. I know when this is. So, Loki unlocked his true power and blasted our asses into the past when the witch hunts were ongoing. Alrighty then. Holy shit, Rosa is a badass. Getting the tag team with Rosa is a win. Teamwork. work. So you remember how I gave wins to this armor earlier? Yeah, we get a full level in it and it's getting more wins. This whole battle has a battle of a thousand heartless vibe and I'm digging it. Ooh, a scene mirroring the first playable part of the first game. Something I've yet to note is the differing health bars depending on who or what you're fighting. It's the little touches that make everything so great. working together. I suppose if they can get along, we can as well. Bayonetta brings up a valid point. Oh, thank all that is holy and unholy the entire screen doesn't move. Just gotta say, I love Lopter's design. Can we just keep the trend of awesome looking final bosses going? This is what I promised you. Your chance at revenge. Max 
accept it freely. <laughs> Balder bamboozled him. to the rescue now the time has come for our powers to become one again and for me to ascend to the throne as Aesir god of chaos so Lopter's master plan was to reunite with Loki and the power he took so long ago to become Aesir god of chaos once again and yeah that's about as insane as I was expecting Come now. It is time I receive your power, witch. There's something so menacing about a soft-spoken villain. Don't worry, I got the kid. You've got my permission to show him your stuff, Bayonetta. What on earth was that? Being a god of chaos apparently still cannot mentally prepare you for Luca's random bullshit. Just some fool always swinging in out of nowhere, albeit with absolutely impeccable timing. Damn it, quit destroying my summons! This god will see those powers returned. <sighs> Oh shit, Bayonetta got her left eye of darkness stolen. I do love when our characters aren't completely invincible. It gives a sense of stakes and urgency. Also, it brings up the question of what the long-term repercussions are going to be. Acer's final form is even more amazing looking. We can create our world with our own eyes. An indulgent statement of human folly. Do you have any idea how much turmoil and confusion you have created? We may not see our next step. We may stumble. We may fall off the path. But we always move forward. That is the power of man. Fuck yeah! Human perseverance! Oh. Orbital lasers? Hell yeah, that'll make a final boss fight! Doesn't matter if he disintegrated it, that's still amazing. I thought you were all out of cards. The real trump card's the one you keep hitting until just the right timing, mate. What? The real power of Lord Aesir, the god of chaos, is nothingness. The power to erase anything and everything from the world. Hot damn, Loki played Lofter like a damn fiddle. Whoa, hold on for a second, kid. What happens to the world if you- Any good card play as a gambler, right? Either the world will be destroyed, or it will create its own path. Human free will will determine which way things go. Holy shit, that's a hell of a gamble, but I can appreciate it.
Yeah, that seriously tops the first game. Gotta give a few wins out for this one. One, Bayonetta and Balder have different dance styles from the different clans. Two, the summoning gate was half Umbra and half Lumen. And three, Omni drop kicked Acer's soul out of his body. That's absolutely amazing. Did not ever think that would be on the gamer resume. Gamora, Devourer of the Divine, summoned by Jean as a finisher, is the perfect icing on this cake. Return to another place in time. Create a new era. One that cowers to my will. Shit! He's trying to shed his body and return to the spirit realm. He'll just be reborn in a different era. <laughs> my power have you lost your sanity sanity is a requirement for our kind you will never see another era trapped inside me only an endless circle of time mate that pure evil you're dealing with it's a poison that will live inside you forever so be it what's wrong can be made right through human hands damn I did not expect we'd get a Balder redemption arc, but here we are. Turns out Balder wasn't evil, he was just possessed by a spirit of pure evil. Ceresa, just one time. Call me... Daddy. Daddy. Thank you, Ceresa. Nah, it's sweet, because he wasn't able to watch her grow up. <laughs> is someone cutting onions in here? My name is Loki. And I think you can quit treating me like a kid now. Then I'll call you by your name when I see you again. As a man. Here's hoping Loki will show up in Bayonetta 3. Bayonetta has a promise to keep. Sales are so much better after the holidays. And the distinct lack of acts of God doesn't hurt either. Sereza, cat got your tongue? No. No. I'm fine. A little sign to know Loki's okay. And once again, I'm singing the praises of Bayonetta 2 for giving Bayonetta a bit of extra depth to her character. Come along, Enzo. Damn it! I forgot Enzo! Oh, I was wondering why there wasn't a short, foul-mouthed Italian in earshot. Where did you leave him? He said he'd wait for me in the plane. Again? What a day! What a day! Honestly, that's one of the funniest damn jokes in this game. Don't at me. Loving that the game ends where it starts. There's only one way to ring in the new year. Let's dance, boys! The ending credits are a certified bot! Just like last time, you can fight while the credits are rolling and get extra rewards. River, than a, a slowed down version of Moon River as performed by Andy Williams is a perfect way to cap off the end credits.
foreshadowing for something we know will happen eventually. Huh. I guess it quits being foreshadowing at that point. That lead into the logo of Bayonetta 1 is a nice touch, though. Wait, there's no dance number to end it off on? I hate it here. I absolutely adore Bayonetta 2 as is fairly obvious by the high win count. It's more fun to play over the original at times, even if some things can be annoying on repeat playthroughs. The insistence on making most bosses a flying gallery is irksome the second, third, fourth times around, but in the moment it makes a nice set piece. Seeing the jump from 1 to 2 makes me excited for what 3's gonna give us. The story shares a lot of beats with the first game, what with an amnesiac finding out about greater destinies and the like, but it does enough with those similarities that I hardly noticed them until it was pointed out to me. But you know what? It's an incomprehensible mess and I love it for that. Insane and over the top is the name of the game and Bayonetta 2 has both in spades. Can you really improve a unique sounding soundtrack? Turns out, yes, since the music is even better than the first. There's of course Moon River, which again I love repurposing an older track and making it sound so unrecognizable from the original and a wide variety of other tracks that help keep you pumped for battles, digging deeper into the immersion of being an ass-kicking witch. While the first game isn't clunky by any stretch of the imagination, Bayonetta 2 plays much smoother than the original iteration. It especially helps when you don't have to kill your fingers or controller to hit those quick prompts. That's easily the best change is having just a little more time to get those bonuses. Having a dedicated button for the angel weapons helps too, as it opens you up for more stylish combos, which is the name of the game after all. Having Nintendo funding Bayonetta 2 did wonders, as again, while the first game wasn't bad in this regard, you can tell they had the proper funding to make the characters move and emote the way they really wanted them to. Sure, they kept in the stills, but in clocks this time, but that's more of a style than a hindrance. In closing, man, have I said just how excited I am for Bayonetta 3? I can't pin down just one thing that made me fall in love with the character, but man, this is one of those things that I've been excited and looking forward to for a very long time. Truth be told, when I started this channel back in 2019, the Bayonetta duo were among the first things I got footage for because I was so excited to talk about how great they are, and for the eventual full reveal of Bayonetta 3. I truly cannot wait to see what our favorite angel slaying witch has been up to. Thank you for watching, and try not to die out there. I'm a little disappointed the main menu isn't as flashy as its predecessors, it's still cool looking, acting as a model viewer for the demons you have in your possession currently. Wow, opening up on Bayonetta getting beat down and actually struggling shows just how much of a threat Singularity is. <laughs> Seeing the new enemies get summoned is pretty awesome. Plus, he actually says Cumulonimbus, which is the name of the creature. <laughs> Is 
Singularity saw Doctor Strange and said, hold my beer. What if somewhere, some version of me was walking along through the grass just like me? Could we be following the same path, taking the same journey? That idea had its hooks in me more powerfully than any anime or sci-fi novel. First off, I absolutely love the multiversal aspect of this game. Secondly, I love that Viola is outed as a weeb in the first five minutes of the game before she's even seen. <laughs> Seeing the watch crack like that is very worrying considering we learned from the last game that the Umbran watches are tied to the witches. No watch, no witch. Playing as Bayonetta weak, with the hands dragging at the edge of the screen gives me very Raiden vs Jetstream Sam vibes and uh, that didn't end well. <laughs> This is much worse than losing an arm. Well, that's not fair at all. This is our last world bridge. The multiverse spanning necklace is hella cool. This is the only significant hint to a later plot point. Ordinarily, I'd let Deadman be Mr. Positive about this. But this particular subplot doesn't have any bearing on the plot until the last couple of chapters. Damn, that's brutal. The power of the Weeaboo is strong with her. The chapter select this time around is a map in Viola's room that she throws darts at to start the level. There's handy level cards that let you know which reality you're in and where you are. Once again, logos are highlighted as objects in the real world. Platinum is always a win. It's always nice to see Bayonetta in casual attire. Enzo? What was the weather forecast for today? While it's not Helena Taylor reprising the role of Bayonetta, Jennifer Hale does a spectacular job. What's the matter, your glass is dirty? Not a cloud in the sky. Perfect day for a ball game. You know what that means, right? It means you found a way to drag me all over the city and turn my opening day ticket into toilet paper! Ah! <gasps> Jesus! How about a heads up for- ah! Wow! Great reflexes! Storm's coming. <laughs> Ingenuity! Is that foreshadowing? No. Maybe. I don't know. Not again! Life from on high just means more holy bullshit! What the- uh, A girl? I'm no meteorologist, but I'm pretty sure it's raining bitches. You know- this kid looks kind of familiar. Foreshadowing. No, stop making fetch a thing. I mean, foreshadowing. Hey, uh... Whoa. A... Oh, yeah, this? Oh, this? This is just what I needed. And so you pervert, knock it off. Great. Don't tell me one of her pets got loose again. Call back. Come on, baby. Just want to get back over the bridge. No 
done? Get lost, Enzo. Can't have you died before I get my dough. Rodan to the rescue. Granted, it's not for altruistic means, but a save is a save. Rodan is the only man that's ever existed to look like a badass while wearing a penguin hat. This opening is legitimately horrifying. The entirety of New York is being wiped out by a tidal wave. It's definitely setting the tone of the game. We get codex entries for each homunculus, and it's one of those scroll things Singularity was using. I am loving Bayonetta toying with the new enemies like she always does. <laughs> that dirty look she gave the Stratus is amazing. <laughs> the gratuitous striptease is back again. I stand at ah! Moonlight Serenade is the moon based song this time around, and while I don't like it as much as the previous two, I love the continued theme of repurposing older songs to have a new sound. <laughs> Masquerade is a new form Bayonetta can take depending on which weapon she has equipped. I love that Rodan's plate reads Infinite One. thing ain't from Paradiso. No sanctified seasoning means no deal. Better think fast, Bayonetta. Uh, storms are not worse than I thought.
and be damned if it ain't the demon slave. That's one ancient art I thought was lost for good. Not having angels to snack on leads to Bayonetta using the super duper lost art of Demon Slave, giving us one fun tool to use while playing. You can summon a demon of your choice and directly control it in battle with the downside of not being able to move. It's very much a trade off worth risking. I love the introduction to Jean in this game is her doing dumb shit with her motorcycle like usual. Jean to the rescue. Jean. Teamwork! Jean! Damn it, Jean, we just went through this last game. You can't just sacrifice yourself all the time. Now people go! Since Bayonetta can summon a Madama Butterfly so freely, it's a great visual way of showing just how much she's improved her skills. We actually get to see more of the Gates of Hell, and now it looks appropriately hellish. <laughs> oh yeah, we got all Metal Gear rising up in here! Also, that's a hell of an entrance exam. Within the trinity of realities, the world of chaos, it's actually made up of uh, countless universes, all stacked up together. That's the multiverse. Rodan giving a breakdown of how the multiverse works is a win. So anyway, Viola, you gonna introduce me to this thing or what? I love that Cheshire has been chilling in the background for several minutes before someone acknowledges his existence. Damn it, Cheshire! You know you're not supposed to pop out like that! I also love that Viola has a hard ass punk rock attitude at first, but it's made clear very quickly she's a doof. We get the Indiana Jones map travel again, but this time by a demonic kitty riding a bike. Bayonetta 3's title card is brought to you by the island of Thule. Yeah, it's exactly as hilarious as I imagined it would be. Bayonetta sticks the landing. <laughs> Viola, not so much. That sword is it just for play? Is it for me? Fuck! Don't call me Kitty. Too late, Kitty. When Bayonetta gives you a nickname, it sticks. Just ask Cheshire. Uh, I mean, Luca. You're seeing that off in the distance too, right? Yeah. Pretty sure those are other worlds in the multiverse. Seeing the multiverse shown out in beams of light is a cool way to showcase them, especially since later on we can see them crumble out of existence. Phenomenal remnants are the new battle gates in Bayonetta 3, and this time there's a helpful screen letting you know what accessories, weapons, and demons you can use before jumping into them. If I'm going to waste time, I'd rather do it in a nice hot bath. Same Z's. Incredible. It feels like being bathed in moonlight. A fountain of magic energy. I'm starting to like it here. Occasionally, you'll come along the umbra golems that turn into magic pools rather than treasure, and they'll give you unlimited magic as long as you're standing in the circle. I love the finger snap to dispel barriers. Too late for regrets now, I'm afraid. Bayonetta! Separate vacations for now, then. Good luck! I love how chipper Bayonetta remains, even with the multiverse on the brink of collapse. What I find most hilarious about Jean is according to the Codex, she is a part-time superhero and calls herself Cutie J. You ride on various demons all through the campaign instead of just one level. Now can I knock points for it since it happens multiple times? Dude, I'm riding on a demon dragon. In what conceivable way is that a negative? Don't worry, I know this song by heart. In 
Within each level, you collect Umbran Tears of Blood to unlock an extra side level to gain you extra goodies, like new weapons and summons. Instead of a regular old portal, you can visit the Gates of Hell through a record player. You can expect a fair rate for these now, too. Of course, I'll gladly accept any halos you bring in. Might even have something special for you. Rodan is an equal opportunity capitalist. Hold up. Almost forgot to give you this. Saw that demon slave and figured you could handle it. Take special care of my baby. Instead of gaining random weapons through LPs, you get random weapons that channel specific demonic energy. G Peller, for example, is a hammer that doubles as a sniper rifle, but it channels the demon masquerade energy from Gamora. Very nice. John. 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 John! The still scenes from prior games only come up when viewing the chaos gears of the current universe we are part of. What's this kind of thing? I thought I smelled some decent bread, but it's just an ugly witch. I am not a fan of the demons speaking English. It loses something when they aren't talking in the demonic language. Okay, but Phantasma Renee is voiced by Die Hardman himself, Tommy Earl Jenkins. Ugly, you say? With all those eyes, I think you'd be a bit more perceptive. You can occasionally find angels and demons in the world, and you get updated barrier smashing animations. What is this, a Resident Evil game? Not quite a convertible, but I could get used to this. That's... ominous. Was an angel or a demon, but not quite human either. Who are you? That's a good question. One that... Isn't satisfying at all. I, um... Was gonna be nicer about it, but yeah. This whole sequence was cool, but the monitor having a happy face, then a sad face, topped the whole thing off. Astral Chain reference. Now why don't you sit for mummy? I'm disturbed at how turned on I am by this. Do you believe in fate? Luca? Fate brought us here together. And it will never tear us apart. Oh, Luca. Never change, you lovable doof. Man, these guys have been a huge pain in the ass. Hey, I bet you take care of them for me. Appreciate it, Cerecita. Wait! <sighs> I see his motto is still act first, think later. At certain points, we get zapped to what I assume is early teenage Bayonetta and do puzzles in a very limited form. I literally have bigger fish to fry. No time for minnows. variant of Bayonetta we see has friggin' demon yo-yos and is badass with them.
Bayonetta's Demon Masquerade is like a magical girl transformation. It's a shame there's not a lot more done with this, like having Umbered Climax replaced by it. So, while it's cool, I won't be awarding as many wins to it since it's mostly used as a different way to traverse the map. Spider Netta! The glowing target was a bit on the nose. Could it be you got a bit of a masochistic streak? Certainly shocking and sad the first time it happens. It gets old seeing the multiple bayonetas die and knowing that's their fate so you can get a new weapon and summon. This was a wasted opportunity to have multiple bayonetas interact and potentially have shenanigans with. Nag, what the fuck? That took almost all the wins away! We both know the game will earn it back. You're just as dissatisfied with how the multiversal aspect was handled as I am. Remember, as much as you like games, you need to be honest about what bothers you, right? Yeah... Good. Now let's move on and watch Bayonetta do dumb shit. Not in the mood for cheap science fiction. I take it your singularity then. The real heartbreaker. Yes. Fantastic! But you'll go through hell trying to break mine. Godzilla-sized Sin Gamora for a kaiju fight! Told you the woods would come back. Get an atomic breath finisher. Metal Gear Jean! You know, there's other stealth influences outside of Metal Gear, right? Metal Gear Jean! <laughs> Then, I'll take care of these bastards myself. I'd also like to point out that as much as I love Bayonetta's new outfit, this is absolutely my favorite look for Jean. In all seriousness, I love this 2.5D style of stealth and sneaking. It's a nice break from the normal combat style, and it makes you think a bit outside of the box since Jean doesn't have access to all of her magic. Now am I? Alright. Let's 
just see how steamy things can get. Train time! Kids is why you have situational awareness. What was that? You wouldn't happen to be. Hey, don't get it twisted, okay? I'm definitely not horribly claustrophobic at all. Got it? Right. Seems legit. Viola song Ghost is appropriately punk and awesome. Come on. Yeah. Maybe a bit too heavy for your little paws, kitty. Oh, don't make me say it again! My name is Viola! V-I-O-L fucking A! Viola! She's really under your skin, huh, kid? But you gotta prove yourself to her if you want to move beyond nicknames. Luca, of anyone, would know that best. Viola can throw her sword out to have Cheshire summoned and act autonomously while she fights bare knuckle against the homunculi. Luca's probably okay though, right? I mean, mostly? Luca just seems to lick his way out of everything. Viola has special entries in the codex, and she has the same thoughts as me on Phantasma Renee's name. Punk Rock Barrier Bustin'. Viola is just a delight. She's equal parts edgelord and slapstick. The shadow remains cast. Another thing I like is how the game over screen is more of a transition than anything. No screen asking if you want to continue, it just does it. sure that's Umbran for you done goofed. Bayonetta to the rescue. For herself. Blasting the bejesus out of Pyrocumulus with the war train gown is the game's on rail section and I love it. about crushing i think you'll find we're extremely game for that oh my god there's a giant mommy to step on me dude you need help What do you need him to do? And why do you put so much faith in him? Well, he and Singularity are... That's decent enough foreshadowing for what's to come, but still not quite enough in my opinion. <laughs> Glad Bayonetta wasn't here to see that. You've only got nine lives, Kitty! Ha! Pure platinum impression of Bayonetta. <laughs> what the- Or 
Poor Viola. She just can't catch a break. Ugh, oh, sand is getting literally everywhere. <sighs> Cheshire, where the hell are you? I just love how appropriately dramatic Viola is being right now. That plus the sheer comedic overtones of the whole scene is priceless. I can't. I just can't. Since Viola is dehydrated, you play as Cheshire, trying to douse for water. Damn, Luca's not playing around. So Luca's the big beastie. The plot point around it still doesn't make the most sense, but it's a pretty cool werewolf looking for him. Damn sand! Don't you just hate when a game introduces an intriguing character only to kill them off? She's not dead, but I wish this bit was. It was a little bit of a joke, but Viola's fairy form is like a devil trigger. She has increased speed, attack power, and heals herself over time. Shit! I fucking love that Bayonetta 3 lets me turn into a choo-choo of doom. I made it clear you were not to follow. And when someone gives me orders, I just... The interloper has extended the challenge to me. I will meet it and then return. Have faith. I'll see you again soon, princess. Jean is protective of Cereza, no matter what reality we're in. Ball has an awesome ability that puts her in my permanent summon roster. If you can get her to sing four times without being interrupted, you get a downpour of poison rain that melts health bars. Eventually, I'll master the art of shredding from a distance. Sometimes the scenic route actually pays off. He may be destroying the multiverse, but at least he's polite. Uh, forget about me. I need to kill this beast. And me. Do it now! Quickly, damn it! Please. It's heartbreaking to see how much Bayonetta cares for Jean, even if it's not her Jean, and watch her guns falter, then drop. Forgive me. My weakness failed you again. No. You've grown stronger than you know. Cereza. I love to see the relationship between this Cereza and John, and it's a shame it's the only variant of Bayonetta that gets any kind of fleshed out story. <laughs> Okay, call it.
calling him Phantom is a Devil May Cry reference, and a connection that goes beyond Enzo dealing Dante information in a novel. Fighting this big ass boss while swapping between Phantom and the Bayonettas is awesome. Dr. Sigurd, a pleasure to finally meet you. My sequel senses are tingling! I mean, follow-up mission senses? Woman, hail you from the same sphere as that beast man? <laughs> Luca? Luca. So he is called Luca. I am Luca. Infinite Universes does leave room for a fairy king, Luca, but I still didn't see that coming. I love the battle theme used for the Strider. Knowing the story's significance of him, the theme is very frantic and somber at the same time. <laughs> Malfia, do a sweep of security. Oh my gods, there's a Phantom Thief Bayonetta! <laughs> I have you now, Papillon de Ombre! No one is above the law! I know there were a few places complaining about Enzo's bad French accent, but like, I'm pretty sure that was the point. I found it hilarious, and since it's my video, I'm putting some wins on it and moving on. <laughs> Ouch! Another display of Bayonetta being unable to pull the trigger on a loved one, even if it is a different variant. The flying section this time around has you chasing after the possessed Rosa, and it even shifts perspectives. Riolana! Demon Clock Tower. Forget about me. Destroy this abomination. Now. It's so heartbreaking to see Cereza like this. After everything that's happened, the first time she can actually see her mother in over 500 years, and she ends up having to kill her. Si vous vous arrêtez, vous êtes foutu! Getting the locals involved, you'll pay for that. Yeah, singularity is just the worst. What the fuck, Bayonetta 3? Pretty sure Bayonetta won that dance off.
was a dance-off turn fight. Keep up! <laughs> I love that Bayonetta delivers when it comes to anime as fuck fights. Duo Ia Bayonetta! Vila da Costella Ordo Ananael! Fabon Zanvi Bafanis! Rio Hi Paradis! Okay, that's a pretty badass entrance. I wonder what's in store after this. did not think opera singing hordes of enemies and a giant bat demon would go on my game resume. This just makes it a thousand times better. This is why Ball is my favorite demon. May you be reunited with your mummy. Ah, my feet! <laughs> Full throttle it is, then, Doctor. Those distant, hear the sound! Those close by! See the spectacle. Evil doers, fear final justice. We have the platinum knight has arrived to defend the weak and innocent. QTJ is here! So, remember me talking about Jean being a closet hero? Yeah, it's just as great as you think it is. After completing all of Jean's side missions, you can replay them for extra halos in Rodon Shop. Pleasure to meet you, Cerisa. Jean has told me much about you during our trip. Did she? I hope at least some of it was actually true. Jean has a habit of showing off for the gentleman. You bitch! <laughs> I can see that you are very close. I adore seeing Jean and Bayonetta be catty towards each other. It really helps build their relationship. Jean? Come <laughs> on. 
Jordan and Jean are badasses. Always getting in over your head. I'll take care of you. Bayonetta knows it's Luca. I love that she's being kind and understanding, trying to make sure her friend is safe. Are you frightened, Luca? Your hands are shaking. Once he's run her through, she still only wants to show kindness to her friend. This is one of my favorite Bayonetta moments for her character. That's actually a decent explanation for why Luca is always around and kind of in the way, but still helpful. Somehow my intrusive thoughts made it into the game. to the rescue and self-sacrifice. You have no fucking right to call me by that name. You know what? Fuck this boss fight being a back-to-back -back repeat of the exact same boss. Luca! Luca's alive! And this man has to be. Kitty. Dr. Sigurd! The villain is barely introduced, and then we find out he's the mastermind behind everything. That's either really lazy writing or really stupid, and I don't know what's worse. Goodbye, John. <gasps> Our time together was short, but unforgettable nonetheless. Rude. So the Alphaverse was always just a decoy. He wanted us here, and away from Thor. They played us like a damn fiddle! Later, Violeta. I love the subtle callback to the beginning, confirming without explicitly saying that Luca is Viola's father. I'll always love you both. Self-sacrifice. I love that like with the previous two games, we end where we began. Oh, uh, hell yeah, we get another kaiju fight. Ka -me -ka -me -ka 
okay, but like, that's awesome. Flying to the moon without me? Can't have that. I feel like this is a reference to Fly Me to the Moon as a battle song in Bayonetta 1, so I'm gonna win it. He's now Baldur Aesir, but he kinda looks cool. <laughs> All of the Bayonetta's tag teaming is awesome. It would have been a much better payoff if we could have recruited them in some way rather than their spirits coming for revenge, but it's still cool nonetheless. <laughs> Please. The individual bayonetas we've met using their abilities against Singularity is a fun showcase of them. <laughs> John to the rescue. Let's go. Okay, this is a little more like it. This form is still lesser than the prior two final bosses, but is still epic. Ooh, it's chilling being back at the start with our Bayonetta mirroring the one from the opening shot. I don't hate that Viola is Bayonetta's child from an alternate timeline, I'm just disappointed there wasn't more done with it. while I was gone, did you? You all seem to be having a good time. Awfully rude of you not to invite me, don't you think? Oh, hell yeah! Bayonetta 1 version to the rescue! of our caliber don't need invitations, Doc. Right. Double hell yeah for Bayonetta 2 to the rescue! Also, I love that both are introduced by their respective battle teams. Alright, Lady Killer. Just try to predict what the lot of us will do next. This is an awesome throwback, but you can't swap to the Bayonetta 2 variant at all. I'm sure she would play similarly, but it's still a missed opportunity. Yeah! 
Viola was fucking wasted for this final clash. She should have had a hand with the finishing blow, but it's idiotic that the opposite happened. You still don't realize just how stubborn I am, do you? No matter how many of me there are, that doesn't change. That's my unshakable truth. Very well. And I suppose I'll simply erase you all and your so called truth. <laughs> and in this very instant. Three bayonetas combining to beat ass is pretty epic. Sorry to keep you ladies waiting. It was a bit hard to find you with all the rubble. God damn it, I fucking love Luca's random bullshit. It's not a bad look for you. In fact, I might even prefer it than usual. Fate brought us here together. And it will never tear us apart. We'll always be together, Cereza. No, Luca. We've always been together. My clumsy, lovely fool. Will forever be in my heart. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? This is how you choose to end your game. Bayonetta has never shown any attraction towards Luca, and on top of the other bullshit in the game, you chose to spring this on us? I've had a feeling for some time that something wasn't quite right with the game, some problem I had yet to pick up on, but I finally figured it out. The writing and characterization of the game is fucking misogynistic. From the multiple Bayonettas, Jeans, and Rosa dying, lousy setup of Viola being Bayonetta's daughter, Viola or Bayonetta not having any agency in this ending, even though it would have made perfect sense to do so, to this fucking travesty. Bayonetta has always been a heroine. She made her own choices and felt real. You took all that away from her and made her a damsel in distress. She's not even the only character that you do that to. She didn't need a fucking man to save her, and it was explicitly avoided in the first game, where you would expect something like that to happen for the time period this game was released. She didn't need a fucking man to save her, and it was explicitly avoided in the first game, where you would expect something like that to happen for the time the game was released. This is character assassination, plain and simple. Bayonetta and Jean were always shown to be extremely close and implied they were together. 
You had a chance to make a queer couple iconic, but instead, you made this cookie-cutter bullshit that doesn't remotely make sense. There were four writers on this project, and not a single one of them stopped to think that maybe, just maybe, there was a better way to write this iconic character than to shove her into a standard-sized box. I've read smut with better written OTPs than this. If they're gonna act like women have no agency, then I'm gonna turn the win counter back to the year of women's rights to match their attitude. Bayonetta beautifully dancing during the summer credits does have a win back though. Your gate and the song that I sing. I love the slowed down version of Moonlight Serenade performed by Frank Sinatra during the end credits. New York was destroyed entirely. How that shit didn't get fixed. Cheshire! <laughs> The other. That's coming out of your cut for this one. So's it's kibble. Shit, my bad. Forgot to use the family name. Be back by curfew. Bayonetta. <sighs> okay. Let's dance, baby! Okay, for all of my pissiness over the ending, I do genuinely enjoy Viola taking up the mantle of Bayonetta, as well as incorporating her dad's scarf and mother's glasses into her attire. they brought back the dance number at the end. There's a picture book you can buy and find keys for in the game to unlock an extra chapter. I adore the art style of this and kinda wish the main game looked this pretty. Who was that? <sighs> Must have been a rabbit or something. Right, Cheshire? Through this whole extra chapter, we see Bayonetta as inexperienced and actually frightened. I'd love to see more of Teenage Bayonetta, learning to be brave get a better handle on her powers. Also, love the VA for the role, Anjali Wall. <laughs> and that's it. Either it's DLC down the line, or a tease for Bayonetta 4, but here's hoping we get to delve into Bayonetta's past. I know I got real negative there at the end, but I did have a ton of fun while playing Bayonetta 3. After finishing the game, I can see why it's still rated so highly, even if the story trips up at the end. Any and all negativity I have towards the game comes from a place of love, I promise. I love women and the LGBTQ plus groups, and want to see proper representation for them. So when a character has been established one way, and is shown to do other things, it's infuriating. Most of the story beats can be put in the not set up good category. It's fairly obvious that Viola is supposed to be Luca and Bayonetta's child, but there was no great setup for it, and hell, they could have explored that through the journey instead of just chucking it at the ending. She was also wasted in the finale. Like, she's built up great through the story, and you'd expect her to land the finishing blow, or team up with Bayonetta, get to save her mummy, unlike her real mother. Something like In No Way Home, where Amazing Spider-Man caught MJ, and that helped him get over accidentally killing Gwen Stacy. Luca getting a fey power-up so he could save Bayonetta was just awful. I liked the bit about following a voice, and that's why everything has worked out for him, but the random Faye transformation was way out of nowhere. Why did the multiple Bayonettas have to die? Why could we not have simply recruited them to fight Singularity? They could have died in the final battle, sure, 
but it seems like you're trying too hard to get rid of them when you know they're gonna die simply so you can get a new weapon and summon. On that note, what the hell is up with Singularity? He's barely a presence, and when he's found in the story, he almost immediately betrays you. It just feels bad. Balder and Acer were both players through most of the story and had significance to the main characters. Singularity is just... there. One last gripe that's fairly minor, but you can't play as Bayonetta 2 in the end sequence, but you can play as Bayonetta 1. Obviously, Bayonetta 3. Just feels weird, like they're snubbing the middle child. Aside from all of that, I did love visiting the different locales brought on by multiversal travel and seeing different styles of Bayonetta. I have no complaints about the music. It's all fantastic. While I do prefer the other Moon-related mixes more than Moonlight Serenade, I absolutely love I Fine Whispers of Destiny. It may be my favorite battle theme out of the three games, but my absolute favorite is Ghost, Viola's theme. I've always been a bit of a punk and love punk rock, so there was no chance. It's almost got a Devil Trigger vibe with it, as Viola ended up being the Nero to Bane of Dante. Gonna start off by saying the gameplay is tighter than it's ever been. Summoning the Demon Slaves was a fun mechanic, and I love the even wider variety of weapons you get this time around. Some things I did notice were these. We need a weapon wheel, or a DMC5 style switching, because just two weapons seems restrictive, when prior games let us have up to four weapons. Granted, they were two to a set, but only two weapons feels limited here. Some of the demons seemed gimmicky, and it's telling when you're forced to equip them during certain story segments to get past places, effectively limiting your three demon slots to just two, taking away some of your own agency. Demon Masquerade seems wasted. All you use it for is traversal, and it pops up in your finishers. Personally, I think that instead of Demon Slave, we should have had an updated Umbran Climax tied to the Demon Masquerade forms, and that would switch up our combos, and we'd get to see more of them. Because the Demon Masquerades do look cool, but they're barely showcased. For whatever reason, Purple Suckers made a return, but with magic regenerating and no quick slots for them, it feels wasted. The graphics were... Not great. This is one of the few times I will complain about it. I've got better fidelity out of the older titles. With it being a Switch exclusive, they should have catered to the platform better. Unless there are plans to port to more powerful consoles, like No More Heroes 3, they should have gone with a different art style. The Lost Chapter looks amazing because it's something that's made with limitations in mind. I couldn't take a single screenshot that didn't look grainy as hell, and that's a bummer since Bayonetta's world looks the best it ever has, but we can't effectively capture that. Since writing this original script, I stumbled across a video explaining the ending and why it works. In closing, I don't hate any of the individual points presented in the Everything Great About or Review sections. I don't care that Luca had a power-up. I don't care that Bayonetta and Luca fell in love. I don't care that Viola was Bayonetta's daughter from an alternate dimension the whole time. I don't care that various Bayonettas died. I don't care that Bayonetta herself died. The character I've loved for over a decade. I care that it wasn't executed properly. A lot of what happened needed better writing. Don't go against everything a character has been established for. For shock value, or because it's PC, or whatever the reason may be. I love Bayonetta, and I only want what's best for her. It's nice to have different perspectives to put things into, well, perspective. The ending that Johto Johnny broke down and presented does actually make the story work significantly better than I had originally thought. But if you need to jump through hoops to make the story work, then it doesn't work. It's the same as Mass Effect 3's ending. If us fans have to come up with the indoctrination theory to make the whole thing work, then it's not a good, well-written ending. I can appreciate that you play as different universes Bayonetta's, and in hindsight, it actually makes sense. But when it's thrown in at the last minute and not clearly built up for it, then it all just falls apart. I want to stress again that I do love this game and the characters. I just feel like things could have been done much, much better. Thank you for watching and don't fuck with the witch.
Shit, my bad. Forgot to use the family name. Be back by curfew. Bayonetta. <sighs> okay. Let's dance, baby! Long ago, there existed two clans, the Lumen Sages of Light and the Umbra Witches of Darkness. Together they controlled a mysterious power. The clans put in place strict laws to ensure that strife would never consume them. But a pair of star-crossed lovers broke this rule, and a child was born with the blood of both sage and witch. It was a beautiful baby girl. Teresa and the Lost Demon. Already loving the storybook aesthetic Bayonetta Origins is presenting. Long ago, there existed two clans, the Lumen Sages of Light and the Umbra Witches of Darkness. The whole story is told just like a storybook, with static images and pages flipping with a narrator speaking over everything. It's a pretty big departure from Bayonetta games as we know them, but I dig shaking up the formula a bit. But a pair of star-crossed lovers broke this rule, and a child was born with the blood of both sage and witch. It was a beautiful baby girl. Surprising nobody, I'm in love with the art style of this game. It's very appropriate for the style of story being told. Also, Tiny Cereza is a win. The witch clan took in the young girl, but she grew up shunned as a pariah, cursed by the circumstance of her birth. Her one comfort was the night she snuck into the village jail to visit her mother's cell. Something we've known and speculated for a while, but Cereza had a terrible childhood. Just seeing it play out is even worse than it originally imagined. Can, can I just give her a big hug? Her mother passed each grueling day, barely able to so much as move in her cold cell. But when her daughter came to visit, the witch always showed her a loving smile. As a parent, this hits really rough, so kudos to the game for being... Three minutes in and having me in tears. More alone than ever before, the young girl clung to all she had left. A stuffed cat named Cheshire, which her mother had made for her long ago. We now have a bit more context on why Cheshire is so important to Bayonetta as an adult. Even after losing her memories, this is one of the things that managed to stay in her mind. Why don't you just leave? Stay away. She can't be Why would you say that? It's just so heartbreaking that she's a child that's done nothing wrong and yet she's still shunned by her whole clan. Oh, guess that's a <coughs> rude reduction, isn't it? Cereza, you're almost out of time. This is your last chance. If you don't hurry, you may never see your mother again. John, I... I can't. Ugh, you big baby. Come on, I'll lead the way. Even though this game has a shocking lack of Jean, what little she is in the game is fantastic. And I love getting to see her and Cereza's budding friendship. Wow, Sean, you're amazing. Shut up, baby, I know it. What is this? Don't... Don't come any closer! Ah! No!
Luca on to the rescue. Ceresa decided to consult her friend Cheshire. Truly an awful decision. He's always giving terrible advice. Going with the full storybook theme, our page flips to the next chapter, and it even has a little picture representing what's within. The music is also appropriate for the storybook aesthetic. I swear, I have no idea what else to call this style. Anyway, we got some more bombastic tracks when it comes to boss themes, but it's all mostly in this grim fairy tale style, and it fits so well. Shame we don't get another moon theme song, but this isn't your standard Bayonetta game. Saving has you scribbling in your journal. But it's neat and on point, so sue me for liking the small stuff. Chores neglected and I find my apprentice enjoying her beauty sleep. Morgana is Scottish and that's a win. Nope, don't need to look any further into that. <laughs> Deadman has a thing for Scottish accents. Shut up, Meg! I'm sorry! Uh, I just closed my eyes for a second. I... I was... I... Uh. Ceresa began making an excuse, but Morgana's scowls stopped her in her tracks. Ceresa often reminded herself that these chores were all part of her training. Wax on, wax off. Her legs dangling like that is adorable, so it's a win. Oh. <sighs> At the thought of herbs, Ceresa could not help but make a face. This is one job she wished could be forever stricken from her regimen. Do we have a problem? No, ma'am. I love the character that's on display here. Ceresa clearly doesn't like the specific chore of gathering herbs, but doesn't complain all that much about it because she's working towards an end goal. Dinner time! One helping of magic coming right up! She's even being cheerful about it. Such good character writing on display here, and I love it. <laughs> Your magic spell you'll use for the majority of the game is called Witch Pulse, and it has you rhythmically hitting the moons to successfully cast a spell. No one told me they could do this! I've got to catch it quick! A funny tutorial for Thornbine, but it's effective at showing you your spell that will be used in combat. Ceresa hummed a happy tune while picking the herbs. As she bent down, she noticed a pretty flower growing amongst the weeds. Oh, those flowers would really bring out the color in Morgana's eyes. She's just so goddamn precious. Hair is the most versatile tool of an Umbra witch. It can be shaped into our armor, weapons, and even used as a medium for summoning infernal demons. As blood flows through veins, magic flows through a witch's hair. Care for it as you would your most precious tool, and defend it as you would your very heart. Morgana gives Teresa the lesson on the importance of her hair, and I can't help but to admire the graphic that goes along with it. Bataiva Tozu! Step by step, Ceresa <laughs> flawlessly performed the summoning dance, until... This looked like trouble. Unless bound by hair, there would be no way to control the demon. No, and she was in such a good mood. What kind of witch fears her own summoned familiar? I was foolish to think you were ready for this training. Oh man, that cuts deep. What? Oh, what are you saying, Cheshire? Take the brace and sneak into the forest? Morgana would give us a right smack on the bottom. I once again need to praise Angelie Walsh. It's not the cleanest segue, but it needs to be said. She is one of a handful of actors in the game, and she is playing a well-established character, and this is her first major role. She does an amazing job at portraying Ceresa's giddiness, downtrod, and scared tones perfectly. I'm eager to see what new role she's able to get from this portrayal of such an iconic character. And so Ceresa threw caution and her teacher's warnings to the wind and set out towards Avalon Forest. Little did she know that what lay waiting in those dark woods would change her fate forever.
Oh, hell yeah, that's how you do a delayed title card. <laughs> and like that, our story comes to a close. The end. For fuck's sake, we all know it's not over when you stub with the fake out ending. I'm gonna go with... no. <laughs> While it's not as fancy as the other three, Origins still keeps in line with the introduce an enemy to go into the bestiary for later introductions, and I love it. These were fairies. Nefarious creatures who ensnare the souls of humans who venture into the woods to feed on their vitality. With fairies being introduced into the game, it seems like this may be yet another multiverse instance of Bayonetta as she has no prior knowledge of them in 3, yet are introduced here. Or it's the Bayonetta 1 or 2 version. Either way, it's pretty confusing where this sits from a timeline perspective. Please? Please work this time! Fingers crossed, Ceresa prepared to use the summoning spell she learnt from Morgana. Batai Vatorzu! You don't think... could that have been... But before Ceresa could finish her question... Cheshire's first summoning is awesome. Hooray! Ceresa managed to do it all by herself. Just as Ceresa feared, a demon had indeed possessed her beloved stuffed cat. The creature had desperately sought a medium in order to survive in our world. In lieu of hair, it settled for one made of felt. Not gonna lie, that's pretty hilarious. You... you want me to return you to Inferno? Now, how would one go about doing that? <laughs> Ceresa once again heard the demon's words, this time even more clearly. Send me back. Send me back. Not a fan of Cheshire not having his own voice. It does make sense in the context as he's not actually speaking, but he should have had his own voice actor attached to his voice. Claws like daggers descended on Ceresa. <laughs> but what if we hear? The demon had stopped cold. As if bound by an invisible force, no matter how he struggled, he was unable to touch Ceresa. I'm not sure if this is a plot hole for this game or for Bayonetta 2, but Kamora seemed to have no problem attacking Bayonetta there, where Cheshire was unable to. While the combat isn't nearly as deep as its companions, it's a great blend of simple but semi-complex combos to learn. As Cereza approached, the demon felt the strength return to his body. In an instant, he felt right as rain. His body was linked to Ceresa by powerful magic. Moving away from her robbed it of its energy. That's as good of a reason as any to have them tied so closely together. The pungent scent tickled Ceresa's nose. It was rosemary, often used to ward off evil spirits. As soon as the scent reached Cheshire, he pulled away, face scrunched up in disgust. While not in battle, you run across some minor puzzle solving in the overworld, and having Rosemary separate you is a good enough reason to have the two take separate paths. Ceresa ran to pick up Cheshire and held him tightly to her chest. In her arms, Cheshire felt his strength returning. Y'all, this game has hug mode. I'm thrilled there's an actual reason for it, but I didn't need a reason for it. 10 out of 10, best game ever, all games should have a hug mode, it's the cutest thing ever.
And on that note, this is quite possibly the most hilarious animation I've ever seen. This game fucking rules. <laughs> Whoa! There's a victory theme of sorts when you're finished with the battle. Uh, hey! Give me a break! Uh, uh, this is pretty damn funny, so it gets wins. What have we here? There were signs that a witch had set up camp here. Perhaps I'm not the first witch to enter this forest. Oof. That is just some pitch black foreshadowing. To take my mind off that, here's the map cursor being adorable as hell. Yes! Have I mentioned how adorable this game is yet? Even the concocting animation is just darling. The Tierna Nolk is a dimension the Fae likes to use to lure in and trick unsuspecting travelers. It's a great way of shaking up the visuals, as well as rewarding you with bonuses when you finish the puzzle and battles held within. Destroy all elemental cores. So I'm like, reverse avataring? They spotted the white wolf. Without a moment's hesitation, the pair gave chase. I like the white wolf being your diegetic marker to the next objective. Those cheeky fairies! What's their problem? It's because they know you're weak. Cheshire patronized Ceresa. <laughs> you just find a safe place and try to stay alive until I find a way to save you. Don't worry, Morgana. Look, I was able to summon a demon of my very own. Is that... You summoned a demon into your stuffed toy! Morgana's incredulity is priceless. It honestly sounds like no witch has ever attempted to summon a demon in a stuffed toy. In one corner was a rock, polished to a shiny finish. This would make a good substitute for the mirror she used when training. Shiny rock is as good as anything when it comes to bettering your skills. When you find these rocks, you can access the skill tree and acquire more skills for both you and Cheshire. Cheshire, here you go! He's a hungry boy. Does this work? <laughs> Sarisa's dance is adorable. What? What? Why don't you flock off already and leave us alone? Flock off, Featherface, or you can stick around and find out the hard way. Missing his mark, Cheshire's claws struck the elemental core instead. All was quiet, until... Energy poured from the core like a furious whirlpool. Standing in its midst, Ceresa felt a strange power flow through her. Well, it wasn't the intended target, but hey, whatever works. Let's go! Each time you burst an elemental core, Cheshire and Ceresa get a new element to play around with, changing Cheshire's special attacks and letting you reach new areas. What are you doing? Let's just say I'm the one you talk to when you want to know about the goings on in this forest. Well, I'm not a fairy, at least. Take my word on that one. Says the creepy voice from the shadows. She's got a point. Try asking me something if you don't believe me. I'll answer any question you have. Okay, um... Have you seen any wh black wolves around the forest lately? Oh, but you're looking for a white wolf, aren't you? Perceptive. <laughs> What are you saying? 
You would just abandon them? Don't you know what it feels like to be torn from someone you love? But as she said these words, Cereza realized something. Oh, I suppose I tore you apart from those you love when I called you to this world. I was just born. There's nobody I love. No need for love. Only strength. Man, that is a huge gut punch with Cereza realizing she stole a newborn. I'm going to be strong too, but I'm going to do this style. Unlike some creatures I could name. And confirm, she's stylish as hell. <laughs> Cereza squealed in delight. She was still a child after all. I can't blame her. Sliding down that big slide would be hella fun. I... I can fight! Don't treat me like a helpless child! Come on, Cereza, get it together! I'm going... Uh, I'm going to be a witch! Self-pep talk! The first real boss fight of the game is against this fairy in a circus. It's very whimsical, and it fits the setting perfectly. I'm tired of your tricks! Cheshire! Time for the finale! Get pretty awesome finishers too, giving you a small QTE section. I know the secret pathways of this forest. I may be able to take you to somewhere you've been before. Ignis is the cutest fast travel system ever. Look at him in his oversized hat. Are these claw marks? No way. Nothing has claws this big. Right? What? Don't you just love when Mother Nature shrieks her terrifying answer at you? It had found a new target. Ceresa knew she must fight, but she was petrified with fear. Ah! Aw, he does care. Running away as usual doesn't surprise me at all. Cereza is understandably scared, and the forest is being a dick about it. What can you possibly do? Everyone knows you're a failure. Mummy, Mummy believed in me! Believing in yourself. Go hide somewhere! Yelled Cheshire, preparing for battle. Even though it's only been a short while and they've been at odds the whole adventure, it's lovely to see Cheshire protecting Cereza like this. I still can't save anyone. No. Not this time. No more running away. I am going to be a witch. I need to be strong. Self pep talk. I wonder if that fairy will be back. But now we know it's not completely invincible. Invigorated from the battle, Ceresa was almost confident. Cheshire was in a sour mood. A part of him realized that if it were not for Ceresa's actions, he would currently be dragon food. But he just could not accept that he had been saved by someone he considered so far beneath him. Ceresa finally has a bit of confidence. Sadly, it comes at the cost of her partner feeling bitter that a lonely human had to help him. I love the theme when fighting the Jabberwock. It's a great mix of classic Bayonetta and this fairy tale of Cereza. I have to help him! Aw, Cereza's getting to be so brave. <laughs> Eat 
Not now. Until that big belly of yours bursts. Badass teamwork. What are you talking about this time? We won! Cheshire started grumbling about how Ceresa moving around the battlefield made it hard to fight. Ceresa's celebration had been ruined before it could even begin. Rude. After Morgana's spectre had vanished, Cheshire let out an angry growl. That sounds like foreshadowing Morgana's betrayal. Even if it's a little awkward, I love traveling around via water jet. Ceresa told Cheshire the reason she had entered Avalon Forest. Lucan appearing in her dream, her quest to save her mother, and the power she was promised that waited at the heart of the forest. Cheshire was speechless. Entering the forest based on a half-remembered promise from a boy in a dream? I, I, I know what it sounds like. But it's all coming true. The elemental cores were just as Lucan said, right? These are more than mere dreams. If he did not return to Inferno soon, Cheshire would surely die. The thought that he was chasing the whims of a love-struck child sent his blood boiling with rage. If I don't make it back to Inferno, the last thing I do in this miserable world will be tearing you limb from limb. You know what? That's fair. Mommy? Is that you? Mommy? Come this Come way. This. Mommy, please don't go. Yes, my dear That does not sound good. Pretty sure it's not Rosa. Run away, Cereza! I'm coming, Mummy! Don't leave me again! <laughs> the shade vanished with a blood-chilling scream that echoed through the trees. Cheshire to the rescue, even if Cereza doesn't quite see it like that. Their fight was quickly reaching its boiling point. Then came the straw that broke the demon's back. Don't forget who summoned you here! Why don't you just behave like a proper demon and do as I say? Cheshire's eyes narrowed. For a second he was quiet. Cheshire broke the silence with a threatening growl. I wish I'd never summoned you! <laughs> Good. Good! That's it! We're through! Ceresa's final words echoed off the trees. Then all was still. That hurts so much to hear. Especially with Cereza being callous on Cheshire's feelings. She keeps forgetting that he's a newborn and is being a dick to him. I hate to do it, but gotta give her a rude deduction. I can get through this forest fine by myself. I'm not scared. Why the fuck you lying? Why you always lying? Cereza once again spotted Cheshire. Incapacitated by his wounds, he was surrounded by fairies. What has he gotten himself into now? Nope. Not going to worry about it. <laughs> but before she knew what she was doing, Ceresa had set off in Cheshire's direction. Aw, she quit being a shit and did what was right. A large gash was cut on Cheshire's leg. Bits of cotton were falling out, along with his magical energy. The fairies had not been kind to their captive. Cheshire could hide his pain no longer. That cut! Unless the wound was mended, 
The magic and fused threads that bound Cheshire to this world would not last long. Hold still. If you move around like that, you'll just make things worse. Ceresa needed to suture the wound as soon as possible. There was only one way she could think to do it. Remember, Ceresa. As blood flows through veins, magic flows through a witch's hair. Care for it as you would your most precious tool, and defend it as you would your very heart. Sorry, Morgana, but I found something more important. These were the precious locks Ceresa was growing out to resemble her mother. As expected, they worked their magic. Cheshire's wound closed in an instant. Just... wow! I wasn't expecting this game to get me all up in my feels like it did, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't shed some tears at this part. Ceresa's growing up to be a fine woman and sacrifice something that was precious to her in order to help another. This is the kind of thing I love to see with prequels, showing more depth to established characters that makes me love them even more. Don't blame me if that teacher of yours has a fit, Cheshire said quietly. Don't worry, it'll go back. After healing Cheshire, Ceresa finally has the confidence to pull off restoration magic, and it gives you a new traversal ability. How do you like that? Don't think I'm so shabby now, huh? No, a cut like this is nothing. But this ribbon isn't so bad. Cheshire said in a slightly embarrassed voice. Yeah, I think it suits you perfectly. Aw, they're so cute together. Stop! We need to pet you a stepping stone to see the ruin in our kingdom. We will not allow him to wake up plastic child from his slumber. We don't realize it at this moment, but the fairy king is actually the hero of the story. Insolence! Before us all, bend the knee. Loose with four legs, bend too. The very trees of Avalon bow before us to pay obeisance. We are Pukar the Wise, Pukar the Magnanimous. Bonds for dramatic effect. Puka, being full of himself and having a Farquaad-esque stature, is hilarious. He's supposed to be this regal thing, deserving of all the respect, but you just can't help but to laugh at the poor deluded thing. What? Okay... So it was you who did all that awful stuff to Cheshire! I see a royal behind in need of a good spanking! Yeah, Cheshire classic Bayonetta. <laughs> oh damn, he can call angels and they come in with their music? Yeah, okay, maybe he's king for a reason. I do actually find it humorous that the Affinity are a basic enemy in Bayonetta and they can be dispatched with ease. While here, they're actually a bit difficult, what with Ceresa being inexperienced. It's a nice juxtaposition is all. Back to Paradiso with you! Hell yeah, we even get a torture attack. You live the fairy kingdom! Yeah! 
Realizing what had happened, Ceresa hurriedly began wiping her face clean. The spectacle was too much for Cheshire. He rolled with laughter. Aw, I love that Cheshire has softened up a bit and is actually having some fun with Ceresa, even if it's at her expense. Morgana's ghostly form appeared. She took one look at Ceresa and furrowed her brow. Ceresa, what have you done with your hair? Sorry. I just... I needed it for something. Ceresa explained how she had used her hair to save Cheshire. It was for a good cause. Besides, she looks cute. You leave her alone, Morgana. <laughs> As he neared the threshold, memories of their journey came flooding back to Ceresa. does care. Cheshire sacrificed his ticket to go home to make sure Ceres was safe. I love the growth both of them have shown over the course of this adventure. What have you done to him? Ceres's question fell on deaf ears. Puka was busy cackling maniacally. Until... Alrighty then. Let's just turn from a cute game to a horror game. Oh! What should I do? Maybe I can help him with my magic? Don't worry, I'm here for you! Cheshire! Are you in there? Do you recognize me? In a fun twist, you help calm Cheshire down instead of fighting him. Ceresa has to be smart about how she moves around the battlefield so as to not get hurt. Ceresa sung him a lullaby she remembered from long ago. Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. I love this ties into Fly Me to the Moon being the battle song from the first game. Multiple timelines be damned. It's adorable as hell that the song was the lullaby that Rosa used to sing Zereza. How can this be an old lullaby if Bart Howard wrote the song in 1954? Stop overthinking things, dude. It's for fun. Is there no, no challenge, challenge you cannot you overcome? Ceresa, you, you amaze, amaze me. me. Compliments. No, no, I am here. I'm afraid what you see in that crystal is nothing but a shell. Both Ceresa and Cheshire were startled. The source of Lucan's voice was none other than the White Wolf. That was unexpected. Lucan was the last fairy prince, the son of the former king and his human queen. The king was loved by his subjects and even sought a way to live in harmony with the human world. But a faction of evil fairies conspired against him. Killing the king in cold blood, they next came for his wife and young Lucan. His mother managed to save Lucan's spirit before she was driven out of the fairy kingdom, never to return again. Unable to kill Lucan, but fearing the return of his royal bloodline, the rebellious fairies sealed his body using a powerful spell. Poor guy. I think I have to give points for that tragic backstory. With the seal broken and my fairy power restored, we can leave this forest together. I will help you save your mother. So, please. Something only a witch can possess? Just say the word. How can I help? Why, Ceresa, you've already brought me exactly what I need. What? 
I did? Yes! yes. You brought, you the, brought sacrifice. the sacrifice! Oh boy, that's not good! I take back the win! You witches harness their power as a tool! A weapon, nothing more! You're wrong! Cheshire is no tool! He's a living creature with his own thoughts and dreams! We made it this far by working together! So I'm not about to offer him up like some sacrificial goat! I love her so much for this. She's showing exactly why she's such a good character. Even if that's what witches have been doing, it's not what she wants to do. She's doing what's right and not necessarily what's been taught to her. This one hurts. I wish we didn't have to fight Luca on, but his desperation class was Cereza's morals, and sadly, there's no other choice. Just, wow. The arena, the stakes, the music, everything just blends together so good. The arena is this orb of power with rings embroidered with fey symbols floating around it, making it difficult for Cereza to actually reach Cheshire. The stakes are Luca on trying to absorb the elemental power from Cheshire, and the music, wow. The music is easily one of the best tracks in the game. It's so melancholic, Luke Allen clearly not really wanting to go through with it, but he's dying and feels he's got no other choice. But just you wait, there's more to come. <laughs> He's gonna pay for that. Time to take back what he stole! Okay, let's go! Oh, hell yeah! I'm taking back what you stole from Cheshire! Alright, one element down! Getting to take back the stolen elements is an awesome addition to a boss fight. And four! We've taken back everything you stole, Lucaon! Pressing all of the contextual elemental buttons for a power-up is most definitely a win. Y'all, 
I was hyped for this when it happened. Everything between the holding back to not hurt Cereza, the demonic markings appearing on Cheshire, and don't get me started on the flipping gold danglies that represent Bayonetta's weapons and color. You want to talk about an awesome retcon? Here it is. I love this so much and it's getting hella wins. Unbound Cheshire is so much fun to play as. He's totally OP and makes the spectacle of a battle even better than it already was. Lasers colliding and a confident Cereza are wins. <laughs> Look on! A heroic demon? Such altruism was unheard of throughout all infernal texts. That's because Cheshire's a good boy. Understood. Even if he's a cat. I thought demons were all heartless monsters. But I was wrong. Cheshire, Cheshire was it? Was it? Forgive, Forgive me for what, what I tried, I tried to, to, do. to do. The only heartless, the heartless one was me. Was me. Aw, Lucan is a good boy too. There's still time. Come on, we have to get you to her. Lucan, I won't let you die here. While Cereza isn't a good boy, she's precious. Hearing his words, Cereza knew it had been Puka who had betrayed the Fairy King. Puka who had torn Lucan's family apart before cursing him to wander the forest in solitude. Rude. It's not riding a horse with a sword on its face, but riding Cheshire away from a wall of fairies is certainly exciting. <laughs> Come up and... This wolf is actually the spirit of a boy. If we don't do something, he'll die. Please, Morgana, can you save him? Morgana said nothing. She gently stroked the wolf's fur. Confused, Cereza looked at her master. Huh? She saw an expression of which she did not think Morgana was capable. It was warm, filled with love. Morgana? You want to save him? How dare you? How dare you say those words after what you did to him, you foolish girl! Oh, that can't be good. Cereza, why is that demon still here? Did you not reach the altar? What do you think those years of training were for? Morgana appeared to be growing more angry by the second. She advanced on Cereza and Cheshire. Morgana? What are you saying? What's wrong? You still don't get it! The training, the brace, the dream! Do you have any idea how long I prepared for the day my precious Lucaon would return? Thunder crashed in the distance, wind screamed through the trees. A cold chill ran through the air. Dozens of girls I lured into that forest, each required years of training, all for naught. I was so close this time, 
But you had to go and ruin everything, you selfish brat! Ceresa had endured her share of scolding from Morgana, but this time was different. These were not the words of a strict teacher. They were filled with nothing but pure loathing. That is genuinely heartbreaking. Ceresa just wanted to be strong enough to see her mummy, a gold not too dissimilar from Morgana. And yet, Morgana's actions are nothing short of a betrayal. I did not see this coming, and wow does it make a powerful finale. Morgana! I know I wasn't a good pupil. I always messed up during training and broke your rules. I... I know I let you down. You might have been strict, but I always knew you cared about me. You are... like a mother to me. I just wanted to... make you proud. Get away! <laughs> oh my god, it's my heart. I feel so bad for Ceresa. A pity. You had the potential to become a fine witch, Ceresa. If only you'd hardened your heart. But you were always so damn soft! Morgana is not realizing one very important detail. Do not mistake kindness for weakness. Yet another melancholic theme to go with a battle that is unwilling to be fought by Cereza, but is pushed to have no choice. Holy shit, that's a final boss! What's wrong? Giving up without a fight? Ceresa heard Cheshire's voice ringing clearly in her mind. What am I supposed to do? There's no way I can fight Morgana. I see. Well then, I guess that means our journey is over, hmm? The demon sounded disappointed. Our journey? That's what you call it, right? This whole thing to save your mum? You blabbered so much about her, even I was starting to look forward to meeting her. Cheshire paused. What is it? I'm sorry for what I did back there in the forest. Cheshire? And you were right. I never would have made it this far on my own. Thank you. Ceresa was moved by the demon's unexpected words. Cheshire, wait! I promise to send you home. I intend to keep that promise. Yes! I love that little pep talk Cheshire gave, leading to Cereza embracing her powers even more with her first usage of witch time. Friends protect each other. Friends keep their promises. Gone was the fear and hesitation from Cereza's eyes. In its place was courage and steadfast resolve. I am an Umbra witch, just like my mum. Come on! Let's dance! Her courage leading into one of the most iconic lines, plus the brace breaking signifying her power is all her own? Can I get a hell yeah! 
Such a beautiful arena. It deserves a win. Mother and child shared a tender embrace. This was the warmth he had been dreaming of. Thank you for always watching over me, Mother. You can rest now. I'm happy I was able to see your face one last time. Good night, my son. Sweet dreams. I'm not crying, you're crying. Cheshire realized that this unexpected <sighs> twist of fate had delivered exactly what he sought. A door to Inferno lay before him. Pray for things working out. Cheshire looked back at Ceresa. His expression said what they were both thinking. If I go back, you'll be all alone. Even after all you've been through, you're still going to treat me like a kid? <laughs> Just wait, I'll be strong enough to summon you myself in no time. <laughs> Love the confidence that Cereza has now. She's sounding like her future self. You have grown into a splendid witch, Cereza. You're going to be just fine. Neg, quit cutting onions in here! Make me. I personally love the cat ears, but I do love that she's got a new hairstyle similar to the OG beehive. The night was young. Ceresa set off on her next adventure, the pale moon lighting her way. Please be a sequel, please be a sequel, please be a sequel. Isn't the line in my sequel senses are tingling? Yes, but I really would like a sequel to this specific game. The end. Yeah, that's a boss as hell way to end your story that's told like a story. While it's not Let's Dance Boys and a dance off with the whole cast, I love the ending theme of Together in the Moonlit Forest, as it shows off Cereza through interpretive dance, being timid at first, then being confident at the end. A nice interpretive dance way of showing her story arc through the end credits. We have heard the tale of an unlikely friendship between a young witch and a lost demon. But there is a secret chapter hidden in its pages that remains untold. This is a story of two young witches who are joined by a powerful bond. From this time forth, it must forever remain a secret, never to be repeated. Hell yeah, Secret John chapter! And as for Cheshire, he was nowhere to be seen. Could this too have been the work of the fairies? My thanks. The fairy's power resonated through your memories to guide me here. 
No, it's something much worse than the fairies. It's fucking singular. Unlike Ceresa, Jean lived in the Umbra Witch Village. Though forbidden, she often snuck out to meet her rival. The two never missed a chance to compare strength. Screw the rules, I have money. She thought for a moment, then had a truly devilish idea. I have a proposition for you, demon. I'll get you unstuck. But in return, you help me find Cereza. Find Cereza? The demon eyed John suspiciously. That's the deal. If you say you'll help me, I'll move you to a body in a less precarious position. I have just the thing. Jean produced a stuffed animal of her own. A handsome red stuffed cat. Compared to Cheshire's tattered felt, its velvet fur had a rich sheen. Jean pulling Cheshire from a stuffed body into another body is truly hilarious. Demon, speak your name. I don't have one. The demon showed his gratitude the only way he knew how. An angry roar. I see. Then I shall call you Charles. Ah! And his name is Charles. This extra chapter is mostly delightful. Thus began Jean and Chesh... Ah. I mean, Jean and Charles search for Ceresa. So we meet again, my brave friend. Or perhaps introductions are in order. Yes, you may call me he who affirms all phenomena. My, that's quite a mouthful. You're worse than no name over there. His power extinguished. The specter's body flickered. Then faded away. Good, I'm tired of this shit. Thus concludes the adventure of Jean and Charles. You know what? I really could have done without the whole singularity bit. It was unnecessary and honestly brought down this game overall. He was a sucky, not at all fleshed out villain in 3, and his appearance in this game did nothing to further that. Also, at what point was Jean supposed to pop in and grab Cheshire? At no point was Cereza petrified as she was here. So it's either a huge suspension of disbelief, or it's another timeline. Either way, this one chapter made me as grumpy as Cheshire, and I'm going to put the winds back to the end of the main campaign. I think it's safe to say I adore cute things just as much as I love badass and gory stuff. This was legit. One of the most adorable things I've ever played, and granted, it is Bayonetta, a series I love dearly, but I'm surprised at just how well it resonated with me. The gameplay is completely new, and this is a young, scared Cereza, rather than the confident woman we've grown to love. I love seeing her start her journey to becoming a fully-fledged witch, and the nostalgia and callbacks didn't hurt either. Okay, so I did bash on Jean's chapter hard, but I really can't stand Singular as he is now. I want to make it clear, I'm usually okay with whatever direction a creator takes with their characters. All I ask is that it makes sense. Anyway, this is the review for Bayonetta Origins, not 3. I fully love seeing the story unfold, especially the parts where we can see her later personality shine through. I figured freeing Luca on was not exactly the best thing, although the reason why and Morgana being his mother did shock me hard. It made all the story beats come together for the climax. The music is wild. Sometimes it's all mystic and fairy tale like and others it's, well, Bayonetta music. I love the music and have got some of it in my rotation on my playlist. It's really good. While I'm not a huge fan of the twin stick style of play, I think it works well here. It also helps that you can just have hug mode active when you don't need both out. And as I said before, hug mode's the best thing ever. While I do think that Cereza could have been given more to do in combat, I think the system works just fine, and it adds an extra layer with you need to protect her. I also really like the Metroidvania-type puzzles outside of combat with new abilities opening up new areas. What more can I say about the art style of this game? 
it's beautiful and it actually looks really good, unlike some other games. <laughs> uh, wait, how many times did I bash on Bayonetta 3 in this completely separate video? Look, I waited for how many flipping years and it just shit on her character. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, Bayonetta Origins is super pretty and I'd love to see more games of this or similar art styles. In closing, I have no idea if we're going to get another game in the same vein or a traditional sequel starring Viola, but I'm excited to see where the series goes. It certainly can't be any worse than... Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you for watching and try not to die out there. Friends protect each other. Friends keep their promises. Gone was the fear and hesitation from Cereza's eyes. In its place was courage and steadfast resolve. I'm an Umbra witch, just like my mum. Come on, let's dance! Do you ever hear the tragedy of... Cereza and the Lost Demon. No. I thought not. I was story that Umbra Witches of Darkness would tell you.